Welcome to ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. It's homecoming in Lawrence, Kansas, as the Jayhawks entertain undefeated Texas Tech. The Red Raiders are eighth in the initial BCS standings. Kansas is 23rd. Texas Tech off to its best start in 32 years, but Kansas has won 13 straight at home. Two of the best passing offenses in the country, and here are the trigger men. Yeah, the trigger man for the nation's top passing attack on your left side, Graham Harrell. And there's no doubt who the centerpiece of the offense is for Kansas State. Kansas, Todd Reese having another fine season. Michael Crabtree, best receiver in the country a year ago, having another great season. Yeah, he was the Belitnikov Award winner last year. He's dazzling again for a second season in a row. So two prolific offenses. What does that mean for the defenses? With well, that story, here's Rob Stone. Well, it means you have to have a short-term memory and a resume at the ready to be a defensive coordinator in the Big 12. Spoke with Kansas D.C. Clint Bowen before the game, and he admitted to me, hey, I had to talk to my kids a little bit differently this week. I had to tell them, look, they're going to score points. They're going to make catches. The key is tackle them as soon as they do make those catches. The goal, limit them to six to eight yards a catch. If it gets in double digits, they're in trouble scoring-wise. They hope to limit Texas Tech to 21, 24 points. And, guys, great moment I witnessed before the game when both defensive coordinators came together. They hugged, they laughed, and kind of commiserated, saying, hey, hang in there. Let's help each other find a job if we need to. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. Coaches in the, the heat of battle or just before can find a little humor before uh, before the kick. Donnie Corona to boot it away. Shot Crawford back to receive for Kansas as we're underway in homecoming in Lawrence. Crawford muffs it, then scoops it up at the 10, and he's knocked down at the 21-yard line. L.A. Reed makes the special teams tackle for Texas Tech. Let's take a look at our impact players for the Jayhawks. Well, we just talked about Todd Reesing. He is the leader, the centerpiece of the offense for the Kansas Jayhawks. He's going to get them going today in the passing game as well. Desmond Briscoe had a huge game last week, 12 receptions, 269 yards. And then on the other side, actually on the up, the slot receiver, Kerry Meyer, who is the backup quarterback, has made an easy transition into slot at the slot receiver position. He's fifth in the country and catches. They're going to throw it back. That might have been a lateral and then a pass, but it never happened because it was blown up by Bront Bird. So a loss on first down. You see the starting lineups at the top of your screen. Well, it already seems like Ruffin McNeil, the defensive coordinator for Texas Tech, going to take a more aggressive approach, come out and play a little bit of man defense and uh, set the uh, set the kids free up front. You think that was going to be a pass by Meyer? Oh, no doubt. Well, no, no, no. I think they're just trying to get a little swing pass, get him out in space and get him started early. He was about five yards behind the line of scrimmage. They run Jake Sharp. On second down and 18, he's out to the 20. Sharp with consecutive 100-yard games as Kansas seemingly has settled on a starting tailback. He's pretty good in the classroom as well. Academic first team, all Big 12 last season. You see their head coach there, Mark Mangino, who was uh, coached alongside Matt, uh, Mike Leach at the University of Oklahoma. Those guys know one another well. So third down and 12 for Todd Reesing, who's 17 and three as the starting quarterback. He's already set 31 school records for passing. Now this is a place they don't like, though. Third down and long. And Reesing throwing off his back foot and that pass short intended for Kerry Myers. So a three and out for the Jayhawks. Well, this is what uh, Ruffin McNeil, the defensive coordinator for Texas Tech, wanted. A couple of three and outs to get the nation's top passing attack field position and more touches, more opportunities to put points on the board. And if you give, uh, you surrender that. It's like a tennis match. You, uh, you, you, you check serve and all of a sudden you have the, the advantage there. It could be a long day for Kansas if they don't put together longer drives. Kansas's game with Oklahoma last week was a four hour game and this one expected to be about the same length as that passes or that punt will uh, bounce and it'll be down right around the 43 yard line so Graham Harrell gets his first opportunity today. 70% completion rate on the season. Well, amazing. Graham Harrell, 60 to 70 percent passer on the year. Amazing for the amount of times that he throws it. And we just talked about uh, Michael Crabtree, fabulous big time receiver on the outside. And in the middle, Stephen Hamby, the center. He'll get him started up front. A lot of checks and stuff. Only one sack allowed by this Texas Tech offense and as many as 346 pass attempts. 
And pretty good in run blocking as well. Texas Tech with its best rushing attack under Mike Leach. But that play goes nowhere. Shannon Woods stacked up at the point of attack by Russell Brorson. Well, we know we're not going to see a high dosage of running by Texas Tech. They may abandon it here after just the first play. But uh, Kansas would love to play that game. Play in a box with Texas Tech and, and be able to come off, uh, come off the football up front. But unfortunately, they're going to have to show a lot of looks to Graham Harrell throughout this ballgame. Mike Leach six straight years with eight wins trying to get win number eight today pass downfield to a wide open man going to be a touchdown for Edward Britton on the second play for Texas Tech. That's just how fast they can do it. He came in averaging over 12 yards a catch, but it's just a post route. They're going to occupy the safety to get him to bite down, but watch him push off, and now he's got the entire middle of the field after he gets behind the safety to that side. Now you're giving chase, and there's no way that Corrigan Powell's going to catch up to Edward Britt. So a 55-yard touchdown pass, and now Matt Williams will won a kicking contest during a game coming from the stands earlier this season hits the extra point and that's monumental for Texas Tech which has missed six point afters this year all of those were blocked so Williams tacks on one after Britain goes deep and takes it in to give Texas Tech an early lead. This telecast is available in high definition brought to you by Pioneers new Kuro. Graham Harrell with his 24th touchdown pass this season and Texas Tech on the board quickly in their last meeting Texas Tech won and big reason why they get out to a 20 to nothing lead in the first half Crawford having trouble with kickoff so far for Kansas gets a great block and gets past the 20 yard line. Let's take a look at the replay. You get so occupied sometimes looking for Michael Crabtree as defenders, and he's going to basically just get the attention of both safeties as they, they're going to take a step up here and a step up here. Crabtree runs the in route. Now you got the deep post over the top, and watch the delivery of Graham Harrell right here. Nice little play fake to hold, and you get Edward, Edward Britton on the outside. Nice throw over the top for a money touchdown. So Kansas will operate from the 21 yard line first down and 10 racing in shotgun. And on the run Jake Sharp to the outside picks up the first down got about 12 pushed out by Jamar Wall. You know Andre in years past Texas Tech has been susceptible to the trap game and they've got Texas next week three straight games against ranked teams uh, after this one. Uh, they look ready to play today well, at Kansas. I think so. You wonder if they were able to come in here and not concentrate on next week or let their minds wander next week to Texas at home. And all of a sudden they, they come out, they firing, they're firing on all cylinders here early against a good Kansas football team. Another running play to Sharp, and he gets maybe three yards. Wrapped up by Brandon Cisse. Texas is up next for the Red Raiders. Remember, Texas plays Oklahoma State today on ABC at 3.30. Then you get Oklahoma State and Oklahoma. Now you talk about Texas, the Longhorns, they've kind of gone through murder's row of their schedule. You look there at Texas, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma for Texas Tech. And a lot of people feel like, you know, they've been in this position before and not really able to close the deal. This might be the year that Mike Leach gets this Red Raider football team to close the deal in terms of a tough schedule coming down the stretch. How about the Big 12? Six teams in the initial BCS standings, four in the top eight, all in the South. And here's Reesing with everybody covered downfield, pushed out at the 37 yard line by McKinner Dixon. Well, just an impressive year overall with the Big 12 from top to bottom, with Texas leading the way as, as the nation's number one team, Oklahoma in there. Oklahoma State has kind of been a quiet story. They, they're going to be thoroughly tested today as they travel to, uh, to Austin, the Cowboys, and take on the Longhorns. But overall, you, you look at it statistically and the quarterbacks in this conference, well, it's been a big year for the Big 12. Big down here for Kansas. Got to keep that Texas Tech offense on the sideline if you're the Jayhawks trying to pick up a third and six. 
And Reeson finds Meyer right at the first down marker. We'll see where they give him forward progress. He's going to have it. Stood up by Marlon Williams at the 45 yard line. It looks from that shot that he has it. You know, Meyer started six games as a freshman, went six and six that year, but now 34 of his receptions on the season, of his 59 receptions, have gone for first down. So he has a nice little feel for what they want to do offensively for Kansas. Doesn't wear gloves, doesn't even practice really a wide receiver, no, practices at quarterback in the quarterback meetings. He, uh, you know, he does it old school. Just go out and uh, fight the elements. Reesing on the rollout on first down and hits Desmond Briscoe and Briscoe with great second effort picks up the first down after 269 receiving yards last week against Oklahoma on 12 catches. Well he just kind of stayed with it from the back side. It was a smash map, smash route to the front where there's a nice little six yard sit down with a corner route in front. Reesing does a fine job of setting his feet coming to the backside to Desmond Briscoe and you talk about the game he had last week against OU. Unbelievable. And that 269 yard effort the best in the country this year and the second ever in the Big 12 second biggest output for a receiver in the history of this conference. And he realizes that Michael Crabtree is on that other sideline. He wants to raise his game and answer the challenge. Play clock was at one but I think they got the delay a game before the timeout call. Now they're going to say they got the timeout in so we'll step aside and talk with Reese Davis. All right, guys, already underway. Minnesota surprise team in the Big Ten, 6-1 and one in Ross Aid Stadium. And the way Purdue's played, this probably ought to be first aid stadium. It maybe as a burn unit in the Purdue secondary as Adam Weber finds Brandon Green are going to pick up about 75 or 71 and get down inside the five. And from there, Weber will keep it himself. And Minnesota is on top of Purdue. The game's on ESPN Classic at 7-0 in the first. I like that too, Reese. A first aid stadium. That's certainly appropriate for the struggles <laughs> for Purdue this year. Well, we talked about four of the top eight in the All-State BCS top ten coming from the Big 12 South. And uh, Mike Leach not real happy with the computers this week because they had Texas Tech 11th. That's why they're eighth in the BCS standings. Well, computers can't watch the games and they don't know what <laughs> what's going into. Uh, to the games and how the teams are playing certainly but uh, Texas Tech very deserving of being number eight in the country. The computers account for one third of the standings and Harris and coaches polls the other two thirds. Here's Briscoe out in the flat and he gets run down at the 36 yard line by Williams bought a gain of eight. Well you watch film on Desmond Briscoe it kind of reminds you of Plex Plexico Burris of the New York Giants that long rangy body but he may be better after the catch in terms of when they want to get him the football and uh, you know at 6'3 200 pounds can break tackles excellent after he gets the football in his hands. See the top of your screen there racing just one in completion another high snap sharp on the run and going to be close appears to have the first down inside the 35 Darcel McBath hit him first. Well tonight ESPN and ESPN 2 have a pair of college football games for you. First at 745 Eastern on ESPN number two Alabama taking on Tennessee and Notre Dame and Washington will square off on ESPN 2 college football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. Tennessee got a shot to win that game at home. No. <laughs> Alabama just too good this year. All three phases offense defense and special teams play fake racing with a wide open Meyer touchdown Kansas. Todd Reesing just makes it look so easy a nice little pay play fake and they set it up running the football to Jake Sharp finding his main guy Kerry Meyer over the middle nice little post route clearing things out and Kansas right back in this football game extra point good by Brandstetter 18th touchdown pass for Reesing fourth touchdown catch for Kerry Meyer who has become one of the best receivers in college football as an ex quarterback. It's almost going to be like an arena football game. Whoever gets the most stops going to win this one. 
Both teams with a touchdown pass already here in Lawrence. Tied at seven. ESPN's College Football is presented by Cards.com, where confidence comes standard. The homecoming parade here in Lawrence, Kansas. Last year, the Jayhawks put up 76 points on Nebraska. And I'm pretty sure that uh, the drum major who's back for homecoming uh, was the drum major during the Gale Sayers era <laughs> here in Kansas. Or maybe I could say the John and Junior Riggins era. He's still going strong. That's what you wanted to be, wasn't it? Andre? Drum major. Yep. Oh yeah, all my And just fell back on That's college it. football and the high school. Kind of fell into uh, playing quarterback uh -huh. a little bit. Brandstetter to kick off. Leron Moore and Jamar Wall back for Texas Tech. Each team with a passing touchdown of 30 or more yards. As Moore has a lot of trouble with it, so Wall scoops it up, and he's drilled at the 16-yard line. And we go back to the studio and check in with Reese. All right, Dave, Wake Forest has really struggled in the red zone, 116th in scoring percentage, but they went on a 10-play drive against Miami. Mike Renfret plowing in there, and Wake, a rare red zone touchdown. They're up 7-0 on the Hurricanes. Among the quote-unquote non-BCS unbeatens, Boise State rolled last night, and Ball State getting underway against Eastern Michigan. And boy, uh, Reese and Andre, Miami cannot win a conference game at home. I know it's early, but they just struggle yeah. at home in their league. Harrell hits Eric Morris at 5 feet 8, 177 pounds, and he's near the first down marker. Appears to have it at the 28 as we go to Rob Stone. A lot of activity on the Kansas sideline defensively after they gave up that touchdown. Justin Thornton, the free safety, helmet pitched to the ground. Clint Bowen, the defensive coordinator, working the grease board already. And then this mantra to the team, one play at a time, one series at a time, one stop at a time. On the flip side, Ruffin McNeil of Texas Tech, their defensive coordinator. Hey, with his quick strike offense, he knows he only has a brief moment to make adjustments. Doesn't want to cloud his defensive minds with too much. Here's your adjustment. Sit and watch, them, watch your offense run. All right, Rob Harrell finds Detron Lewis for about seven yards to the 35. Well, last year, Kansas was fourth in the country in scoring defense. It, it's not like the offenses changed in this league, but they were better last year. Well, you're not, you're not going to stop these two offenses. Both coordinators are going to have their hands full. What you want to do is make them drive the length of the field and not give up the big plays like we've witnessed on the two, uh, two touchdown receptions. And Crabtree has not caught a pass, but... As you uh, say, 55-yard uh, touchdown pass on the second play to Britt. Here's a running play, and Barron batched to the second and third levels, and he's out to the 45-yard line for a Red Raider first down. Yeah, he rejoined the team this year after sitting out most of last year, last year with an Achilles injury. So bigger back, more physical running style, first team All-State out of uh, Midland, Texas, out of high school. Averaging close to eight yards a carry. Had a couple of touchdowns last week in the win at Texas A&M. Harrell with a nice toss to Britton, and it's a first down at the 44-yard line. Boy, any doubt about Graham Harrell's arm strength had just been put to rest right there. You're going to throw a, uh, a, a timed out route all the way across the field to Edward Britton, and he was on the far right hash when he threw it. It was on a rope for a big-time completion for a first down. And he didn't have as much time there as he normally does in the pocket, only allowed, only been sacked one time. Harrell now moving past Phillip Rivers into fourth all-time in passing yards. In the country, here's Batch with blockers in front inside the 15. And Batch still going at the five, finally brought down inside the two. And he had Mankind, Brandon Carter blocking out in front downfield. Yeah, big Mankind was out in front. Credit Brandon Carter for pulling out on the screen pass and getting out in front. Watch number 76 right here in the middle of your screen. Watch the big fella get out in open space. And sometimes it's tough for the big guys to find those little bitty guys. Right here, he throws, just gets enough of the defender in the secondary, Daryl Stuckey, who's a pretty good player for Kansas, freeing it up for Baron Batch. There's Mankind, and we got a great shot of him in pregame. We'll show you when we can. But <laughs> He's made up, isn't he? All ready for Halloween. 
Harold to Crabtree. Almost pulled it in, but incomplete. You want to know why they call Brandon Carter mankind? Take a look at this. <laughs> That's him, the wrestler mankind right there, all ready, all made up. You know, he can go just roll right out of the game, out of the game into a Halloween party. I know Ray Bentley used to dress himself up a little bit like that when he played, but <laughs> that's taking it to a new level. A lot of guys uh, with nicknames on this Texas Tech offensive line, which has been terrific so far this season. They'll keep it on the ground, and Shannon Woods grounded by Mike Rivera. Now you get them in the box and this is where Kansas can really really uh, come at you defensively the strength of this defense is in the linebacker core and you saw it right there Mike Rivera third team all big 12 last year watch him come through right here just kind of deliver the punch to Shannon Woods he's I think you think twice about running between the tackles when you play to Kansas Wow well that's nice. Joe Mortensen, the senior linebacker from Concord, California, in there as well to help out uh, his outside partner, Mike Rivera. Meanwhile, Richard Johnson shaken up for Kansas, starting defensive tackle, a freshman from Jefferson City, Missouri. Well, we talked about the nicknames for Texas Tech's offensive line. Here's left tackle Rylan Reed. I'm the Incredible Hulk, apparently. Uh, uh, Luis Vasquez is, uh, is a superhero Indian. Um, let's see, uh, Amy is Mr. Incredible. Sean Burns is a Kool-Aid man. Marlon Wynn is, uh, let's see, he's Fat Albert. And then uh, Carter is, is Mankind. Which is a wrestler, which is, I mean, so you, fits in perfectly. So you've got the Incredible Hulk, the superhero, the Kool-Aid man, Mr. Incredible. Mankind and Fat Albert and, and Rollin Reed, I think he's earned his nickname, the Incredible Hulk. Bench presses over 600 pounds at 625, and he broke his personal best from last year when he benched 565. And to think he was a minor league baseball pitcher in the White Sox farm system. And Amazing. also a cancer survivor. And in 2004, diagnosed with cancer, and he is now cancer free. You talked about being a former minor league pitcher with the White Sox. He's 27 years old. I can't wrap my hands around that 625 pound bench press. Whew. Well, think about it. Larry Allen, I think, has the best all time at 710, so not far off. <laughs> First third down of the game for Texas Tech. They are third in the country in third down conversions. Tops in the Big 12. Third down and goal from the four. Kansas showing blitz. It's picked up. Harrell's pass is pulled in by Crabtree for the touchdown. Boy, number 13 for Crabtree on the year. He had 22 touchdown receptions a year ago when he when he won the Bolitnikoff Award. But just kind of take a look at him right here. The slant route sets him up outside. Now the strength and quickness right there. Get inside and look at the hands. Well, you talk about a complete wide receiver strength, speed, quickness, hands. It reminds me of a guy that wears 80 that plays for the Houston Texans, Andre Johnson. Extra point is good by Williams. Hey, Texas Tech two for two on PATs. That's the 25th touchdown pass. Meanwhile, for Harrell, Michael Crabtree with 35 career receiving touchdowns. So it's 14-7 here in beautiful Lawrence, Kansas, but the Jayhawks are trailing. Well, Matt Williams, who won a kicking contest to make the team, essentially, is now two for two on point afters, but you gotta learn how to celebrate. Maybe it's because Brandon <laughs> Carter was the chest bumper there that he held hey, up a little bit. He can kick. He didn't say he had a vertical. He could just <laughs> kick field goals. That's it. You know, he tried to walk on at Tarleton State and didn't kick there. So when he came to Texas Tech and eventually walked on the team, uh, he was able to get a transfer exception as Marcus Perford returns it for Kansas out to the 28 yard line. Let's check in with Reese Davis in the studio. All right, guys, on the family of networks right now, we're watching a shootout between Texas Tech and Kansas on ESPN2, Illinois, and Wisconsin. A couple of 
somewhat disappointing teams in the Big Ten. You see Juice Williams going down to a sack. And Minnesota, surprising team in the Big Ten on ESPN Classic. Adam Weber's already led one touchdown drive. They're up on Purdue a little over halfway through the first. Yeah, what a great job Tim Brewster has done there. One win last year. They're already bowl eligible this year, looking for win number seven. Big run on first down by Jake Sharp out near the 40 yard line, tripped up by Bront Bird. Sharp, a junior, doing a great job running the football the last month. Texas Tech, eighth in the BCS standings, trying to get to 8 and 0. Oh. Ahead, Andre will wear it out on the ideal quarterback and wide receiver to run the spread offense. And later, uh, the top three teams in the BCS standings all on the ESPN family of networks today. Here's a pitch to Sharp, and he gets run out of play by Bird over on the sideline. Well, they got a nice little mixture of everything. And, you know, it's so, so fast you want to compare these two teams because the coaches have coached on the same, same sidelines before. The offenses are the spread, but Kansas is a little bit different. They like to run the football a little bit more than Texas Tech. I know their numbers are up this year for the Red Raiders, but Kansas a little bit higher dosage of the run than Texas Tech. And Kansas having a lot of success on the ground so far in this game with 44 rushing yards. Racing the pass here. And he's got a man near midfield. It's Briscoe for another Kansas first down. Boy, look for Des Briscoe to get involved in this football game as Mark Mangino here, the head coach, and he's the play caller for the Kansas Jayhawks. In his seventh season, you see the overall record as head coach of, uh, of the Jayhawks. Last year's National Coach of the Year. And by the way, did you know, Andre, that there are only four coaches in Division I who did not play, four head coaches who did not play Division one and two of them are in this game Mike Leach hmm. and Mark Mangino. I'll tell you who the other two are in a minute sharp on first down gets about two and knocked down by Chris Perry a freshman for Texas Tech. One of the other two we had last week Paul Johnson from Georgia Tech he did not play college football yeah. and the fourth one will coach tonight in a game on the West Coast. Charlie Weiss for Notre Dame. Okay gotcha. You're asking me to remember last week. <laughs> and I, and I can barely remember what's going on right now. <laughs> and I'm, I'm searching my mind. Okay, who did we have last last week? Who did we see last week? Well, if you're a defensive coordinator in this game, you got to have Andre's memory. Get rid of what happened most recently, because this is a game of offense. As Jonathan Wilson grabs it at the 30-yard line for another Kansas first down. Ruffin McNeil throwing his hands in the air. Maria, that's going to be a familiar hand signal today from the defensive coordinator. No, no doubt about it. I mean, you can dial up everything, but these two quarterbacks, Reesing as well as Graham Harrell, they've seen every defense known to man. The good thing about it is they get the football out quick, and they don't take very many sacks. Kansas sixth in the country in pass offense. Texas Tech number one. Jayhawks right now first in the North Division at two and one. Sharp with a huge hole up the middle down to the 23. McBath made the stop. Let's check in with Rob Stone for more on Jake Sharp. Well, Sharp's numbers have sharply improved since the bye week a few weeks back. The reason the staff used the downtime to look closely at Sharp's history here and what run plays utilize his strengths best. So the team tweaked its attack around what Sharp sees and reacts to best. The changes, they're less of a, a zone team now, more man schemes with gap blocking, and they picked up their option game as well, averaging exactly 100 yards rushing the last three games since the tweaking. Yeah, he was the backup last year to Brandon McAnderson, started the year as the backup to Jock Crawford. Is racing. Gets wrapped up at the 20 yard line and now a flag comes in. Brandon Cisse turned the face mask apparently. Or either a, that or a blow to the head. We'll see what the ruling is. Boy, they, you talk about being able to run the football. They can do it from a lot of different ways. Reesing certainly can make plays with his legs. You know, he's just a field general. That's the only way you can really describe Todd Reesing and, and his ability to move the Kansas Jayhawks down the field. Understands defenses. Understands how to get in and out of plays. Always concentrating on the game. On the so apparently he did not turn the mask. Remember if your hand grazes the mask it's no longer a penalty. There is no such thing as an incidental five yard face mask anymore. 
Well, you see it right here. Just kind of grabbed just enough of it. I, I think that might qualify for yeah. a flag in my book. I mean, he but, definitely uh, turned it. That might be from one quarterback to another. He definitely turned it, though. He grabbed it and yeah, he turned it, it just it, enough. No doubt about it. But he picks up the flag. And now more flags. Ball start by number 77 of the offense. Five yard penalty, and it's still first down. You know, when you look at these two offenses, a little five yard false start doesn't hurt you yeah. as much as and as fast as they can uh, churn out yardage. That's Jeremiah Hatch, a freshman from Dallas who's replacing Anthony Collins, who's now in the NFL. Kansas lost a handful of players to the league after last year's 12 win season, including a key to lead first round pick of Tampa Bay. Former cornerback for the Jayhawks. So racing on first and 15 eludes pressure and finds Meyer to the 10 yard line right at the first down marker Darcel McBath on the stop. Yeah, no problem at all and Meyer he understands defenses so well because he sits in those quarterback meetings he knows exactly what the quarterback and what Todd Reesing is thinking he wants me to sit down right here not as I get to the safety but right in the hole in the in the soft spot Boy, has he become a really good good weapon for this Kansas offense. And speaking of the NFL, his brother Shad was a tight end in the NFL for five seasons. It is a first down, so first in goal for Kansas. Well, this is where they like to run the option. They get down inside the 10. Play action, racing, wide open man, touchdown, Desmond Briscoe. Great execution by Todd Reesing and the Kansas offense on that drive. Well, I think we got two big time talents on the outside playing in this one today. Des Briscoe and Michael Crabtree. Extra point good to tie it at 14. Nine play, 72 yard drive. Let's go back and take a look. You see right here the receivers for Kansas. Look how in tune they are, the, how precise they are at the play call right there. Both in sync and when they look to the sideline, everybody on the same page offensively for this Jayhawk offense. And that kind of leads to right here the play fake from Todd Reesing and then Des Briscoe in the back of the end zone right there. Nice hands and way to tap him down, big fella. Ninth touchdown catch for Briscoe. He is one shy now of a school record at Kansas for receivers, and he's only a sophomore. Reesing with two touchdown passes in this game, now 19. And this is really what we expected with the prolific passing well, here in the first quarter. You know, it's as well, it's as good as advertised, didn't it? We expected a lot of points already out of the gate. We're not even, you know, still got a minute, nine seconds left in the first quarter. Already 28 points in this football game have been scored. Boy, I, I don't know how you stop it because you got two quarterbacks that complete at very high percentages. Reesing at 69%, Harrell at 60, at 70%. And uh, they've seen just about everything you can throw at them. I think defensively, you're just at their mercy unless they get tired. And the crazy thing is those guys aren't even in the top five in their own conference at completion percentage. You got <laughs> Colt McCoy at 80%. That, that's sick. That is just flat out sick at 80, 81%. Don't cut him short. Now what was 81% your... for Colt McCoy. Now, your offense was different yet similar in terms of how many times you threw the ball. What was your completion percentage at college? It was 64%, right? 63, 63 and some change. Which is really good. Not, I thought it was at that time. <laughs> Jamar Wall on the return, and he stumbled. Otherwise, he might have been gone, tackled at the 32 as we go to Reese Davis in the studio. Dave, Boston College, one of four teams in a four-way tie for the lead in the ACC Atlantic against North Carolina. That BC defense, fourth best in the country. Ron Brace forced the fumble. Kevin Akins finishes it. Boston College on the road with a 10-0 lead against the Tar Heels. How about the job Jeff Jagosinski's done with BC after losing Matt Ryan, yeah. who uh, is probably going to be the rookie of the year in the NFL. Well, he is going well for the Atlanta Falcons off to a four and two start. Amazing stuff from Matt Ryan. We've got two good ones on the field today, though. That 293 yards total offense 
combined in this game. Here's Crabtree out in the flat. Look at him lower the shoulder and take on the corner there at 215 pounds. And he picks up about three or four. Let's, let's take a look at the efficiency of uh, the quarterbacks in the Big 12. You see right there Colt McCoy at the 81 percent leading the way. But that is just flat out ridiculous. Nine of the 12 quarterbacks at 69 percent or more. Now how much of that Andre is it's because it's a short passing game compared maybe to when you played how much is it. This you know you, you got to complete those as well. Yeah. You know sometimes those are the tougher throws to make when uh, when you think you have a gimme and you just want to hand the football to the receiver pretty much. Penalty flag down. Prior to the snap a false start by number 11 of the offense. It's a five yard penalty and it's still second down. Oh, that pass you threw after practice yesterday <laughs> made me wonder a little bit about that 64% completion. Had a little rough on it. Little, you know, I'm going to blame the weather. It's, it was kind of cool yesterday afternoon. We came out to walk through to watch Kansas for a little while, and uh, all of a sudden the ball rolls up at my feet. You're waiting I to jump you. it. You're waiting yeah. for me to throw it. I'm ice cold, <laughs> old, <laughs> in a suit. <laughs> it was funny. Crabtree limped off the field after that last catch. He's nursing a sprained ankle that uh, he hurt last week on a kick return. Well, so that pass that caught out of the 34 yard line by Franks. That's the end of the first quarter. And now the injury concerns for Texas Tech with Crabtree coming off that ankle injury from last week. He kind of rolled it on a kickoff return last week at Texas A&M. But uh, doesn't seem to be slowing down much in this game. Got a touchdown catch so far. Two touchdown passes apiece here in Lawrence. Texas Tech 14, Kansas 14 after one. Fall day as college football lives in Lawrence with November right around the corner. And an undefeated Texas Tech team playing on the road. A penalty flag flies as Detron Lewis was interfered with. Crabtree coming back on the field after sitting out the last two plays. Corrigan Powell was on the coverage. Well, Graham Harrell does such a good job of allowing the defense. Pass interference on number 35 of the defense. It's a spot foul and an automatic first down. Well, Corrigan Powell is a true freshman. Three time all district selection and he, he was the guy caught there you see the first quarter offense 32 plays 15 for first downs the total yards already in this football game. How about this Andre a combined four touchdown passes and two incompletions in that first <laughs> quarter. Both guys playing at uh, at high levels. Shannon Woods big hole and he's out to midfield for the Red Raider first down Mike Rivera on the stop. That offensive line for Texas Tech continues to get it done. Well, whether it's protecting Graham Harrell or in the run game, opening things up for uh, for Shannon, what'd you see here? The misdirection, just kind of holding Kansas a little bit as a receiver comes around, takes the fake, and then Shannon Woods underneath, right behind big Brandon Carter, the junior right guard. You get a little bit of a feel there for the splits of the offensive line, and the left and right tackles are lined up where sometimes a slot receiver would be. Going down to make the catch is Tremaine Swindle, the freshman with his 28th grab on the season. Boy, Graham Harrell operating at a very high level. Watch him right here. Just to, you're going to see the, the rush come at him, but watch him step up in the pocket right here. Nice little play fake. You see the pressure. Step up and deliver the football. That's how you have one sack on the season right there. You got an offensive line that's fantastic, but a quarterback that understands when the ball needs to come out. And again, look where the left and right tackles are, how far wide they are. Harrell dumps it off to Eric Morris, very dangerous in the open field. He's got three touchdowns this year, including one on a punt That's return. And he's near the Eric first down Morris. marker, come up a couple of yards shy as we check in with Rob. Well, I talked to Mike Leach about the placement of his offensive lineman. He says, yeah, you know, they're usually one to three yards apart pre-snap, which is probably the, the biggest width you'll see in this division of football, the reason why on pass plays, it makes that edge nice and wide on runs, gives them big old lanes to run through. The key for these linemen, just good technique. Get the scheme out of the way is what Coach said. Here's a screen on second down and one with those offensive linemen out in front. Batch break and a tackle inside the 10. And ripped out of bounds at the six yard line by Justin Thornton. With Brandon Carter out in front again. The first one he got out in front on the screen pass. He swung and he hit. 
He hit what, what was in front of him. You see him right here pulling it from the left side of your screen. Big fella's just out there. Now he can't find anybody. <laughs> Those guys are a little bit too quick from him. It was all uh, Baron Hatch on that play. And Texas Tech set up right now in the red zone at point blank range. And how about again Brandon Carter at 6'7", 354. They call him Mankind. He looks like him with all the makeup he's got on today. Running down there looking for somebody to nail. Harrell's pass is caught and the official got banged up and he says it's a touchdown though. <laughs> official rolled his left ankle. Couldn't even really make the sign. He rolled it so bad but it is uh, it is indeed a touchdown for Eric Morris right here. Nice little out route and Graham Harrell puts it about the only place it can be thrown for a completion. And uh, you may take a look at this one. I'm not sure that Eric Morris got that foot down. And the ball appears to be across. It's across if it were if it's if it's foot did indeed come down in bounds but I think he's going to come down on the chalk right outside. And the field judge had his I don't know if he's got his foot stepped on or or what by Eric Morris. Bobby Bernard the field judge in this game let's take a look here see how he gets hurt a well thrown football to the outside and trying to drag. oh whoa the, oh, he drags that there. toe and both toes are in it just kind of looked like he was levitating a little bit towards the sideline and didn't get him down but uh, this is a touchdown great job For, as you said incredible accurate throw there by right Harrell to the then, pylon right there in the corner of the end zone where only his receiver is going to come up with it or not and I'm telling you Corrigan Powell the true freshman they have ID'd him he yep. has got the bullseye on his back and any vicinity he's in that's where the that receiver is going to get the football and it actually was a non contact injury for uh, the uh, field judge uh, Bobby Bernard. They're still looking at it, but it, it did look like he dragged that toe. So this is going to stick. They're going to uphold this uh, ruling on the field here that it's a touchdown. Let's get the official word here. After review, the play is confirmed as called. Yep. Touchdown. And we hope now that Bobby Bernard, the field judge, is all right. It looked like he just took an awkward step there because uh, Eric Morris didn't run into it. He's just trying to uh, trying to get to uh, get to the uh, pylon there to make the call. Gets caught up around that uh, long jump area where the track track is and can't get the feet get the hands can't quite get this get his hands up. <laughs> now he's got to go down and grab it. See he, tough ones like a baseball pitch when you get hit by a baseball you can't touch that. No the cameras are on you. Matt Williams on for his third PAT. The point after has been adventurous for Texas Tech. They've had six of them blocked this year. That's why Williams won a kicking contest at halftime of a game earlier this season is doing the duties and he's got three already in this game. Harrell's got three touchdown passes. And we've got an injured official as well. We've seen it all here in just over a quarter in Lawrence already 35 points scored. Field judge Bobby Bernard limping off the field. He will be replaced by an alternate Bernard with either a left ankle or they're actually spending guys a lot of time on his Achilles injury. So he is done. Mark Mangino, as he walked by, Bobby said, Bobby, you're getting too old for this stuff, man. Well, you know, Rob, it's amazing you don't see more of those injuries. But these guys are in pretty good shape. You know, these officials. Yeah. You know, it's just kind of an unfortunate thing. He's trying to make a call and gets called up. Here's Marcus Herford on the return for Kansas out across the 25 and knocked down at the 30 yard line. Nice return and we check in with Reese Davis in the studio. Dave with the emphasis that Urban Meyer puts on special teams in his Taco Bell studio update he probably enjoys it. Kentucky's Tim Masti has a human rain delay trying to get the punt off. First Chris Rainey blocked one that led to a two yard touchdown drive. Tim Tebow doing the honors in Mastay trying to punt again. This time it was another speed demon Jeffrey Demps blocking the punts that led to a Brandon James touchdown Florida up 14 nothing in the first. Special teams so huge in college football especially yep. these days it seems like we've had a lot of big plays uh, and game changers coming on punts. That pass is going to be caught at the 38 yard line by Wilson. Bobby Bernard, they're saying it's incomplete. The ruling is incomplete. 
by the back judge. We do have a new field judge. The Big 12 always has a replacement official. It's Bobby Bernard. You see here the injury by Bernard on the touchdown for Texas Tech. And then some of the Red Raider players uh, having a little fun at Bobby's expense. I'm sure Graham will apologize later. <laughs> He got it up though. Finally got uh, got the uh, touchdown signal up. See the numbers for Reesing up top only two incompletions and two touchdowns. Five different players have caught a touchdown pass in this game and Reesing's pass nearly intercepted by Brian Duncan and he had a guy downfield as well. He had a receiver open and Duncan made a great play. All right, he leads the team in tackles third on the uh, 13 freshman all American last year moved from the strong side linebacker position into the middle so he's a guy setting the defenses in uh, for Texas Tech this year and now racing nine of 12 back to back incompletions. How about Harold 188 yards they've had three touchdown drives Texas Tech has a 56 83 and 69 yards all in less than seven minutes racing hit sacked at the 25. McKinner Dixon who had six sacks coming into this game was there first for Texas Tech. And he is a really good edge rusher for Texas Tech and you're going to see it here. It's just pure speed around on off the corner right there not being able to get out of his stance. Jeremiah Hatch the red shirt freshman left tackle for Kansas just too much speed. So Eric Morris who had the touchdown catch for Texas Tech now back to receive the punt from Tech is not punted yet in this game. And Morris came dangerously close came dangerously close to touching that but goes out of bounds. It'll be Texas Tech ball at its 34 yard line and Graham Harrell back at it. ESPN's College Football, brought you by Haynes. Look who we've got our Haynes on now. Kent Richardson from Derby, Kansas, making his patented kicktail omelet. He's going to give us the recipe after this play. You go down there and have breakfast with him this morning? Thought about it. <laughs> Looked better than the grits we saw last week in Clemson. You had that, didn't you? I did, I did have some grits last week. Actually, pretty good. That's six sticks of butter grits. Good stuff. Graham Harrell in the Texas Tech offense not stopped yet. Three touchdown drives, all passing touchdowns by Harrell. He's got 26 on the year. Going to work again underneath to Lewis. And he gets twirled to the turf at the 43 yard line. Ken Richardson wants to tell us about his kicktail omelets. For this game, it's Jayhawk Kicktail Omelets. You gotta make the best omelet. What you gotta do, you can't just throw your ingredients on there raw. You gotta keep them here on the grill so they're all nice and, and cooking on the grill too at the same time. This is your gravy, sausage, and ham. Can't beat that for a kicktail breakfast. Amen to that. Harold being chased and throws it for Crabtree. You can't come up with it. That pass was on the money though Thornton on the coverage. Tell you what that uh, that omelet with the ham looked good a little bit better than what they had at the hotel. Well I could tell that omelet was made for you because it was a vegetarian omelet. Yeah. You know you yeah. keep yourself in such yeah. good shape yeah. to eat right you know. That's, that's you I'm just trying to follow you around. Well I was, I was trying to convince him to add some cheese so. <laughs> You know, you <laughs> mess it up just a little but, bit. You know, I mean, you're a former professional athlete. I understand when you get done with all those workouts after all those years, you just want to say, you know what, I'm going to eat whatever I want to eat. That's it. I mean, after all, we always see Spielman eating beef jerky on the air. <laughs> and Blackledge, every week he's eating something greasy. That's it. Running play, Harold okay. appears to have the first down. For all the times you couldn't eat what you wanted to eat. And Kansas's defensive coordinator Clint Bowen trying to drop something to stop Mike Leach's offense. Leach's Red Raiders 7 and 0 already 10 first downs. Their highest BCS ranking or in the standing was seventh back in 2005 their eighth this week. A couple of one loss teams Georgia and USC ahead of them. 
Play fake. Harrell on the rollout. Looking downfield. Gets away from a defender. And then there's a ton of running room. And Harrell slides for the first down at the 41. College football on ABC continues with Saturday Night Football. How about some home cooking for uh, Kirk Herbstreet? Maybe you'll have Musburger over for dinner in Columbus. Penn State, Ohio State, 8 Eastern on ABC HD. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. And right. how about the, the Herb Street family getting a little love from LeBron James uh, before the game? That's then? right. They had LeBron on the set this morning. A game day pick the uh, the Buckeyes to uh, to beat the Nittany Lions the, uh, the tonight in that ball game. And what do you think? Got to go Ohio State. I'm thinking. Ohio State at home. Michigan State last week. Running play. Batch with a ton of room off the left side. You know LeBron James was a pretty good football player and. Well, he might have been able to play at Ohio State, but obviously went straight could, to the pros and play he, basketball. He's such a good athlete. He could just about play whatever it is he wants to play. And you see him, the, the athletic ability, the, the ability to cut, jump, stop, start, the hands, whether it's offense, defense, I think he'd make a pretty good tight end. You know, Rick Buecher did a great story on LeBron James last year and how he's growing. Last year he was at six, nine and a half. Mm. 250 pounds. Here's Crabtree. Oh, great crab. And he's hard to get down at 215 yards. Crabtree freakish in the sense of LeBron James in terms of just athletically when you look at him and physically how he plays. And it's just amazing how much he reminds me of Andre Johnson that plays for the Houston Texans. Look at the hands here. And he's continuing to move to basically just inhale the football. And now it's after the catch, the strength, the quickness. Well, he is a sound, sound receiver, and we'll watch him play on Sundays. Again, Crabtree battling a sprained ankle suffered last week. Running play, and Batch goes nowhere. Mortensen makes the play at the line of scrimmage. And Parrish in there, two for Kansas. And a key third down coming up. Well, that uh, that plays into the strength of this defense. That linebacker core, Mortensen in there, as well as uh, Rivera, James Holt on the outside. That's the strength of this Kansas defense. But when you uh, put those linebackers out in space against slot receivers, that is definitely the advantage for Texas Tech. Carroll, as usual, with time. Pass is caught. It's a first down. Detron Lewis, covered by Chris Harris, makes the play. Well, it looks like Graham Harrell, slow to get up. One of the uh, Texas Tech defensive linemen were able to get to him. It was Jamal Green, and he doesn't get touched much. You know, he may be softening up in his old age as a senior quarterback, not being touched, spoiled, only one sack. And well, you get a chance to, to get to him. Jamal Green making the most of an opportunity. We'll see if that affects Harrell at all. But one sack as many times as Texas Tech has thrown the football this year. On pace for over 400 yards passing, had 11 400 yard games last year. He got pressured that time. He still completed it. Eric Morris on the catch. Harrell wanted a penalty on Kansas. Yeah, and he's giving it to the official, and uh, he better watch himself before he gets called for an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. But he's always got a place to go, and always a bailout receiver that seems to be wide open. You're getting pressure. There's always somewhere to go with the football if you're Graham Harrell. He doesn't like it. As James Holt, the linebacker, I thought it was a, a, a timely tackle. Well, he definitely hit him late, but he, he slowed up as if that comes from just not being used to being hit. That's all that is. And his original momentum there as he brought down Harrell. Harrell has a ton of time and swindle on the grab to the 10 yard line. Well, you talked about the fact he's only sacked once. Look at this last week. Look how much time he's got to throw against Texas A&M. Well, he can cut his fingernails, you know, in the time he's got back there in the pocket. Look at him. Just sit back there, sit back there against Texas A&M. And if you give him enough time, they've got enough receivers out in the pattern to, to where someone's going to come open. Look at that. Having a milkshake and still <laughs> delivering the football on time. Having some of those eggs we just saw cooked up by Kent Richardson. 11th play of the drive Texas Tech three of three on third down their third in the country in third down conversion. Play clock was down to two so Mike Leach calls a timeout. Timeout. 
Texas Tech. First Big third out. down and seven coming up for the Red Raiders, trying to punch it in again. College football lives in a big red hat in Lawrence, Kansas. <laughs> that, is, that is definitely college football right there. Texas Tech leading by seven. Third down and seven for Graham Harrell and company. Brandon Carter, mankind with that face paint on. Trying to protect his quarterback. And Lewis on the grab, spun down close to the first down marker inside the three yard line. I think he's going to get a kind spot here, and it's going to be a first down for uh, Texas Tech. I thought he may have come down just inside the first down marker, which is going to mark him a little bit short, but great spot for the Red Raiders. Give him first down, goal to goal here inside the five yard line. And Boy, you got to you take your chances. Do you sit back or you come after uh, Graham Harrell? I think right here you can cover long enough where you can bring some pressure and force him to get the football out a little bit faster than he's used to. Even if it was for it done, you'd think Leach would go for it. Running play to Woods. He gets hammered at the one, but he gets in for the Texas Tech touchdown. Four drives, four touchdowns for the Red Raiders. Well, that's those things that we're talking about. You mentioned the fact Kansas punted the football twice. You start punting and Texas Tech, hey, they're not missing a beat. They're sticking theirs in the end zone. Shannon Woods here, you see the nice little underneath handoff and tough running. Meets Mike Rivera head on in the hole and still able to kind of roll himself into the end zone. 30th rushing touchdown for Shannon Woods of his career. Ninth this season. Extra point, good. Matt Williams, who won a tryout during the season. Found four for four. Mike Leach may have found a, a kicker. One thing about it, he's going to get reps at Texas Tech. <laughs> That's right. 28-14. Welcome back to Lawrence. It's 28-14. Quarterbacks have been great so far. And as you wear it out on the spread, what is your ideal quarterback for this system? Well, it's a guy that can run with the football as well as a, a quick release, strong arm. He's got to have the height in order to, to see over the line of scrimmage if you're going to do it from under center. So the uh, my ideal guy, with the, if I'm running my type of spread offense, about 6'3 in terms of height, weight about 215 pounds, and the ability to make plays on the edge with some speed at 4'4. The quick release, seeing receivers, getting the football out to them in space so that they can operate. So a lot of ways to do it one thing you can't measure the guy the size of a guy's heart like a Todd Reesing who can get the job done in a little bit different manner. Yeah because Graham Harrell's about 6'3 and about 200 210 pounds whereas Reesing's 5'11 and under 200 pounds. Both quarterbacks have been very good in this game but the difference so far two stops by Texas Tech's defense no stops by Kansas. It's Reesing's turn. Corona kicking off and it'll sail into the end zone and come out to the 20. All right, so you broke it down at the quarterback. Now let's wear it out on your ideal wide receiver you for this offense. You want a guy with speed, a burst that can separate himself from defenders as well. So you want a guy about six foot one or so. And uh, when you get to a weight, uh, ideal weight about 200 pounds, 4'3 speed that once he catches it, he's moving away from defenders. But there's always the exception, a guy like Michael Crabtree, six foot three, 215 pounds. He's got all of what I just described, an ideal guy for the spread. Reesing throwing on first down, and it's caught by Briscoe out of the 26 yard line. So that's a gain of six on the play. And then when you're talking spread offenses, you don't really want that long strider. You want a guy that's that's quick, can change directions in a hurry, catch the short intermediate passes and and still be able to get down there. But you know, like I mentioned, Michael Crabtree can play in just about any offense designed on the face of the earth. Three catches and a touchdown for him battling a sore ankle. Briscoe with five catches and a score for Kansas. Here's the pitch to Sharp, and he gets picked up and driven back, but he's got the first down. Anthony Hines on the play. Here's Reese Davis in the studio. Oh, you guys aren't the only place in the Sunflower State where we're getting some scoring. Oklahoma and Kansas State, Manhattan, DeMarco Murray going in. Sooners got on the board first, going up 7-0, and then got the ball back and took care of business again. Sam Bradford, Joaquin Iglesias, K-State has scored two. Murray's added a second touchdown, it's 21-7. You know, it's amazing that Oklahoma is fourth in the BCS standings and fourth in their division right now <laughs> because they have a loss. 
Texas Longhorns. They're perfect. Texas Tech perfect. And that pass perfect by racing to carry Meyer right on the money at the 49. Boy, you talk about understanding the way a quarterback wants a route run. You got a high defender that's here and a safety that's going to show up back here. Now you got to flatten it out towards the sideline, and it becomes more like an out route because of the position of the defender. Excellent route by Kerry Meyer. Meyer with five catches, so 62 on the season. He's fifth in the country in receptions per game. Racing lost the ball. And Texas Tech recovers. The fumble was forced by Brandon Williams and recovered by Dixon. Talk about losing serve. Kansas has done it a couple of times in this game and just off the edge. A nice pass rush there and they're able to get to the football. Look like Brandon Williams who came into this game with seven sacks for the Red Raiders. Going to set him up in pretty good field position here. Tell you what, Texas Tech looks for real. Yeah. Oh yeah. Defensively, we knew what they could do offensively, but the defense now coming through. Special teams playing pretty good as well. Third force fumble for Williams, and as you said, second in the conference with seven sacks entering this game. Kansas got to find a way to return the favor, come up with a stop, but not on this play. Batch just gashing. Kansas and again I think this is the difference with Texas Tech and offense is their ability to run, run the ball 140 run the yards a game that's the most in the leech era I could not agree with you more and uh, they've got a physical presence now and Baron Batch the sophomore tailback or sophomore running back for Texas Tech that's the surprise we knew about the Graham Harrell and, and Michael Crabtree and the other receivers but now the running game is kind of a you know arriving on the stage here for Texas Tech this afternoon. Red Raiders trying to get to 8 and 0 on the season. They're off to their best start since 1976. Eric Morris on a drag route dragged down by Patrick Resby. We mentioned that Oklahoma's fourth in its division. Look yeah. at that. Four of the top eight in the BCS standings are in this division. And of course, Oklahoma State and Texas will do battle on ABC at 3 Yeah, good point. This, these two right here are going to take care of themselves here at uh, some point before the day's end. You're going to have Texas Tech and Oklahoma still in there. Baylor. Texas A&M struggling this season. Mike Sherman down in College Station. Second down and nine. Harrell facing some pressure, dumps it off, and a broken tackle as Batch gets to the 21. Third down coming up. Kansas leads the North at two and one. Missouri's lost two in a row. And three other teams at one and two on the season. Remember, Texas Tech has Texas next, followed by Oklahoma State, then Oklahoma. They beat Oklahoma last year. Big third down for Kansas' defense here. Harrell with only two incompletions. Crabtree on the grab, first down Red Raiders as Crabtree bowls his way to the 10. Well, we talked about earlier some components of the spread offense, and there you see Michael Crabtree out in space making a play, but you want to be able to stretch the field horizontally and take advantage of all the room that you have on a football field. Get the skilled athletes in space like a Michael Crabtree on that last play. Defenses can outnumber you, and then tempo. You can speed it up, slow it down, shift the gears, and basically dictate what you want to do offensively in a football game. So first in goal as Crabtree makes his fourth catch of the game. Harrell's already thrown for 237 yards. Out of the backfield is Eric Morris looking for a second touchdown, but he stepped out of bounds at the two. No, they're going to say touchdown. One official had him out of bounds at the two. And the field judge, who's replacing Bobby Bernard, who was injured on the previous touchdown, signaled that Morris got in. You know, I've been right here before where Texas Tech is right now in Graham Harrell, and now it's just pitch and catch. Having a little fun out in the park on a Saturday afternoon, getting a lot of guys involved, and now second time for Eric Morris in this football game. But you know what? You don't want to be scheduled as somebody's homecoming game. I mean, that's kind of insulting to a football team. When you show up on homecoming, that uh, you know you, you take that a little personal. The homecoming opponent and Morris looked like he got that ball in. They're going to review it again. One official the line judge 
stopped at the two yard line as if he was out of bounds there but the field judge overruled it said touchdown and it looked from that angle there that number one he wasn't out of bounds at the two mm -hmm. and number two he did get the ball across Just which stretch. is what you have to do before you go out of bounds stretch it across you see here the presence in mind of knowing where you are on the field looks as though right there he just may have gotten it just inside the pylon before going out of bounds and see right here one more time a closer look inside as he's going through that's I think a that, that's a touchdown touchdown Texas Tech so that'll be five scores After in five review, possessions. The play is confirmed as called. Touchdown. Four touchdown passes for Graham Harrell, now 27 on the season. And again, the difference is the, the stops, two stops and, yeah. a, and a takeaway by Texas Tech's defense. You know, and, and coming in here, Kansas plus one in turnover margin. So, you know, they, they were decent in that area of holding on to the football and creating some turnovers of their own. Now about uh, even on the season after that fumble by Todd Reese. This has been maybe the most impressive half of offensive football we've seen this year. Most impressive thing for Mike Leach right now is the kickers punching through some extra yeah. points for him. Matt Williams five for five. And it's 35 to 14. Texas Tech is rising to the challenge. Now it's Kansas turn down 21. It's a simple gesture that symbolizes our spirit and community. It's the pride we feel about our beautiful campus. It's the knowledge we share that our mission of education and service improves the lives of our students and people around the world. And it's a tradition that joins us together in a single voice to proclaim Texas Tech University. From here, it's possible. Seven touchdowns, five incompletions in this game between these two teams. It's 35 to 14. Remember, this is homecoming in Lawrence for a Kansas team that has the fourth longest home winning streak in the country at 13 straight games. Kick goes out of bounds, so Kansas will start at the 20. I think Texas Tech was a little upset being the homecoming. Well, you, uh, think, you think they're not upset? You're going to schedule me on homecoming? Are you serious? We're the Texas Tech Red Raiders. I'm, this is a homecoming game. But, you, uh, fired you, know, up. You, take, you take offense to that if you're the, the uh, visiting team coming in. And uh, I think Texas Tech, th th that kind of lit a fire under the Red Raiders a little you bit. Know, a lot of people were wondering, would they overlook Kansas? Even yeah. though Kansas, tough place to play, 23rd in the BCS standings. But would they look ahead to Texas? They've been susceptible in years past to those kind of trap games. Doesn't appear to be the case today. Kansas can. In their defense, they can put points on the board in a hurry, and that's what's going to have to happen if they're going to get themselves back into this one. Yeah, they put up 76 on Nebraska in homecoming last year, running play out to the 26. Here's Reese Davis in the studio. All right, Dave, coming up on the Best Buy Halftime Report, you guys have got a lot of offense there. We've got plenty in Manhattan, too. You see Ron Prince talking about Oklahoma. He's not figured out how to stop them yet. Six touchdowns combined between the Wildcats and Sooners in the first quarter. We'll also get you up to date on Florida. The Gators have been demons on special teams against Kentucky. The Wildcats are coming unraveled. And we'll look ahead to later on this afternoon, Texas and Oklahoma State, the Big 12 showdown, and also talk a little Penn State, Ohio State. Mark and Dr. Lou are here. We'll see you in just a bit. All right, Reese, and the initial BCS standings out. Ohio State is ninth. Penn State is third as we have an injured Kansas player. It's left guard Adrian Mays. Are you in agreement with me that right now there are 10 teams left that can play for a national title? Or is it more? Is it less? What do you I'm think? in agreement with you. And when you look at it and, and things kind of shape out, of course, all the pieces have to fall in place and things have to fall right. But I, I agree about 10 teams that have a legitimate shot at this point in the season of competing for the national championship. If Ohio State wins tonight, wins out. I mean, they're right, they're right back right in the mix to play it. for another national title. Jimmy Johnson looks to score his second straight victory, put some distance between himself and his fellow championship contenders. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues at Atlanta on ABC Sunday. Coverage beginning with NASCAR countdown at 1 Eastern. Jimmy Johnson on the pole, third straight uh, week for that because of uh, postponements due to weather. Todd Reesing with a couple of touchdown passes, but a turnover on his last possession. And then this pass dropped by Jonathan Wilson. There is a penalty flag down in the area of offensive holding. It looked like Daniel Howard, the Texas Tech defender, was held trying to get to Todd Reesing. 
A chop block by number 50 of the offense. Yeah. Penalties half the distance to the goal and replay second down. That's the center, Ryan Cantrell, who actually grew up in my neighborhood. I know him very well, his family. He trains uh, with uh, a good buddy, my goddaughter's father, Leroy Franklin. So he spends a little time with him in the offseason. Ryan's turned himself into a fine, fine football player. Although Cantrell and the rest of the Kansas offensive line having a little bit of trouble with uh, Texas Tech and the pass rush forcing a turnover on the last series. Texas Tech came into this game 103rd in pass defense. Here's Briscoe and he can't break a tackle. Nice open field play by Williams at the 25 yard line. And Ruffin McNeil took over five games in the last season. This is his ninth year on the staff. Got a shot as the defensive coordinator last year, did a good job. And this year has done a very good job, especially with the run defense. They're 12th in the country in that category. Yeah, and it's because, you know, they're. 103rd in pass defense so teams feel like they can they can uh, throw the football but this is by far I, I, in my opinion and talking to Ruffin McNeil the best defense Texas Tech has had they've had some tremendous offenses but now they've got a defense I think in my opinion that matches an offense to where it allows the offense more more opportunities great shovel pass great timing sharp though falls down at the 27 he'll come up shy of the first down. Boy, Reesing waited to the last possible second to pitch that on the shovel pass and tackled by Jamar Wall, and it's another three and out. And guess what? Texas Tech calls a timeout so they can have enough time. 42 seconds remaining and one timeout. And Texas Tech perfect so far, five of five with touchdowns on possessions. Ahead, Kansas. Will it suffer its first loss in 14 games in a row at home? And later, more on the top three in the BCS standings, all playing in the ESPN family of networks. Mentioned Penn State tonight against Ohio State on ABC. Now the Big 12. Past five years, mostly Oklahoma and Texas, but recently, of course, Missouri, Texas Tech, Oklahoma State, Kansas rising in the Big 12. And reasons why these teams have been so successful strong and experienced play at quarterback and of course longevity with Gary Pinkle and yeah having the opportunity to build a program that's a lot of coaches in the Big 12 they've been around for a number of years now another short kick Morris going to take it on a hop and he muffed it it went out of bounds so it'll be Texas Tech football at the 41 well, no harm done but a lot of good are excellent quarterback play. You got Josh Freeman down at Kansas State, Zach Robinson at Oklahoma State, and, and uh, all of a sudden you've got guys that have started for consecutive years. By the time they're juniors and seniors, it makes you a pretty good football team if you've got the right guy under under your center. Quarterback's always been important. It seems like in this day and age, it's even more important. You look at teams, you know, even traditional winners like Wisconsin mm -hmm. making a quarterback change. They haven't won a Big Ten game yet. Iowa seems to have settled on a quarterback. You know, Auburn's had some quarterback issues this year. Shovel pass that's broken up. That's an incompletion. You know, in football, it's it's a copycat sport. You talk about all look across the board in the Big 12. Most of the the majority of the teams are running the spread offenses, and so therefore you're prepared defensively. You're seeing it in practice every day. You should be a little bit better, but uh, they're so efficient on that side of the football because of the consistent play. When you get a guy like Colt McCoy completing 81 percent of his passes down at Texas, that's remarkable. But but every spread's different, right? So even if you're oh, seeing yeah. it in practice, it's built to what your team, the strength of your team is. That pass too tall for Crabtree. Again, Harrell had a ton of time, and he had a receiver down here in the corner on the near side, Eric Morris, with nobody around him. That may be as bad a ball as we've seen Zach, uh, Graham Harrell throw all season long. He had plenty of time, and that's what I'm saying right there. You talk about the, the short throws. Sometimes when you have all the time like Graham Harrell had on that play and a guy so wide open, those are the tough ones to complete. Give me a guy when he's got about a yard or so and, and the intensity level has to pick up. I could pop that one in there with no problem. Back to back incompletions by Harold. He only had two the entire game before this series. Now a flag flies. The fans wanted holding on the previous call. They might get it here, but off to the races, Eric Morris. How about that speed up field? Looks a lot like Wes Welker when he was here. Rylan Reed, though, might have gotten busted for holding. There's a flag back at the 35. Well, you see the concern in the quarterback's eyes, Graham Harrell, right Personal there. Personal foul, illegal hands to the face by number 74 of the offense. 
The penalty's 15 yards and replay third down. Well, it's an incredible Reed. Hulk that gets uh, flagged, Rylan Reed, in all 625 pounds of that bench press. How'd you like to be a defensive end rushing that guy and he bench presses 625? Do you think his punch out of his stance doesn't have a little impact behind it? <laughs> Stop you in your tracks. 27 years old, not only does he bench 265 and he's 314 pounds, but he was a pitcher. In 625. The minor <laughs> 625. You're cutting him short a little bit. <laughs> you may do six, two, 265 about 85 times. How'd you like to uh, face him on the mound? It, it looked a lot like Crucky when he was going against Randy Johnson nope. that one year in the All-Star game. Just get out of the way. No, thank you. Here's Shannon Woods as Texas Tech content to keep it on the ground here and end the half. Okay. See if they uh, use their final timeout. Nope, they won't. Almost a perfect half for Texas Tech, other than that stop right there. But it was the clock, not Kansas, that stopped Texas Tech on this drive. Rob Stone standing by with Mark Mangino. Well, Coach, how does the scoreline affect your game planning for the second half? Well, we got to get some stops on defense. We're not we're uh, we're not playing well on defense at all. We're not contesting the ball. We're not tackling well, and uh, we're just not slowing down their drives at all. They're they're moving the ball pretty much at will. So what what did go well for you in the first half? Well, we had a couple of drives on offense, and turned the ball over. We had a couple of plays that we didn't make, but our offense, you know. If we get the ball more, we'll, we'll have more opportunities to score. Out. I'm sure we'll drive the football, but we got to have the ball in our hands to do that. Tech has the ball. Coach, appreciate you joining us live. Thank you. All right, Rob. And Andre, as you pointed out, 21 points not insurmountable, but Texas Tech hard to stop. 35-14, they lead. Here's Reese Mark and Lou in the Best Buy halftime report. Dave, you're absolutely right. In the Big 12, 21 points. That's just a little hiccup, but. Pretty insurmountable if you can't stop the other side. I mean, Texas Tech on its way to 70 if Kansas doesn't get its act together. Glad to have you with us. Best Buy halftime report. My Hall of Fame running mates, Lou Holtz, Mark May here. And uh, that was that was a pretty impressive offensive showing by Texas Tech, as usual. It definitely was. And Graham Harrell's performance in the first half, 22 of 26, is almost Colt McCoy is from Texas. He was absolutely perfect with the football, the four touchdowns. If Kansas doesn't do something defensively to stop his rhythm on offense, you're right, Reese, they could get to 70 points. No, they've done that before. Nothing's as good as it seems, but nothing's as bad as it seems, but somewhere in between your reality falls. Texas Tech's not that good on offense, and I don't believe it Kansas is that bad on defense. But the thing that impressed me about Texas Tech's offense, number one, the receivers catch, they can run, but they're blocking. They're blocking downfield on the little slip screens that center is incredible. The pass protection is great. They catch the ball. They're very impressive. Coach, I have to disagree. Texas Tech's offense is that good today, and Kansas' well, defense is well, that well, bad Kansas today. Well, Kansas' defense like they got Velcro <laughs> on their chest. They get a guy there, they get, you're allowed to get rid of a blocker. That's why they allow you to use your hand, not to hug them, throw them away. You think they can play defense in this game? I, <laughs> I, I, wonder how it's going, I wonder how it's going over with our fans in Lubbock there that you just compared Graham Harrell's half and made it Colt McCoy-esque, always in the shadow of Texas. They'll get the opportunity. Not get me. Week. That's him. Get a chance next him. Week to get Texas Tech leads by 21. We called Graham Harrell and Michael Trab Tr Crabtree's names a lot in that first half. They're on the Heisman Trophy campaign, and they have a website to prove it. Harrell in 2008. Graham Harrell promises to keep receivers busy. Quote Crabtree in 2008. Michael Crabtree promises to keep footballs where they belong, in his hands. I'm Graham Harrell, and I approve this message. I'm Michael Crabtree, and I approve this message. The first half numbers are in, and they're pretty favorable for both players. Graham Harrell, 247 yards, four touchdowns, one of those to Crabtree as we go in the mix. In the mix. I'm Graham Harrell, and I approve this message. Harrell's pass is pulled in by Crabtree for the touchdown. I'm Michael Crabtree, and I approve this message. Pretty impressive first half by both those guys, but it wasn't just those guys. Texas Tech's defense solid in that first half, and the job they did really is, is the difference in this yeah, game. Yeah, credit the defense with a turnover as well as the running game for Texas Tech to kind of keep this Kansas defense off balance. 
three guys, Graham Harrell included, rushing for over seven yards a carry. I think that's been the surprise if you're looking for one with Texas Tech. They had a couple sacks on defense. Uh, uh, they also had a takeaway uh, on defense, and uh, Mark Mangino going to try to find a way to get something going here from his defense. They did overcome a 20 point deficit against Iowa State earlier this season. They're down 21 to the Red Raiders as we start the third quarter. You know, the main objective right now for Mark Mangino and this Kansas. Jayhawk football team they've got to get a stop they've got to force Texas Tech to trot the punter onto the field. LaRon Moore back to receive for Texas Tech. He thought about taking it out and then eventually takes an E. Well, let's take a look at some of the first half numbers and, and they are huge if you're looking at the left side for Texas Tech. 16 first downs 247 yards passing for Graham Harrell 334 in total yards just uh, amazing stuff didn't punt the football one time in the first half of this game and no field goal tries either and those are areas of concern coming into this game including extra points but five for five for new kicker Matt Williams and only four incompletions for Harrell including two on the last drive of the half which really was a. Uh, Insignificant because uh, there's only about 20 seconds left in that half on that drive. Crabtree here on the first play of the third quarter out to about the 24 yard line. Last year had 134 catches, 51 entering today. Yeah, just shy of uh, 2,000 yards to go along with it. But you know what? You, you saw the graphic. Graham Harrell distributing the football tremendously in the first half. Seven different receivers. They come right out. They get the horse going in the first, in the first play of the second half. Make Michael Crabtree ha happy. Keep he, him a happy camper. He picked up five. Running play on second down. Woods pinned by Mortensen about two yards shy of the first down. Well, let's talk Heisman for a moment and we still got a ways to go in the season but Colt McCoy seems to be everybody's front runner right now but. What about Harold and Crabtree. Well you know there, there's uh, certainly a case to be made for both guys the Belitnikov Award winner last year Michael Crabtree. I don't think you have a, a Graham Harrell without a Michael Crabtree and vice versa. So you know when you start talking about the votes kind of divided themselves up if you're looking at both those guys whereas a guy like Colt McCoy no other threat on his football team to take votes away from him. Only one non quarterback has won the Heisman Trophy since 2000 and that was Reggie Bush. As uh, the pass is pulled in by Swindle, and he has a first down for Texas Tech, as the Red Raiders, one of the best on third down in the country, remain perfect. Yeah, fewest incompletions in a game, five. He's got four of those today. You have to pitch basically a perfect second half here if he's going to uh, to top himself in that category. But he is uh, he has been tremendous, Graham Harrell, in the first half of this game. It's going to be hard, you know, if you if you go based on numbers alone, at the end of the season, it could be pretty close. You would think between Can't ignore him. Bradford and McCoy and uh, Harrell, but a lot will come down to wins, right? And a signature play as Crabtree pulls it into the 49. I mean, how often is it when you vote, Andre, that you vote based on when it's close? You know, a big play, a signature play in a big game. Well, I get the opportunity to see a lot of players over the course of a college season. And, you know, you're watching film, preparing for one game, and you may catch a glimpse at another guy that's up for the Heisman as well. So you're, you're thoroughly informed. And when you start talking about, you know, who's who, still a little bit early. We're still in the month of October. As we draw closer to November, that's when it really kind of set guys start to really separate themselves from the others and you start to play each other Texas yeah. Tech will play Texas next week so it'll be Harrell against McCoy it's Harrell against Reesing today and the catch made by Adam James that's Craig's son who's a big boy 6 3 2 17 freshman yeah, play tight end play tight end in high school and uh, works around in that slot type position for Mike Leach in this offense. But uh, he may be a little bit faster than Pops was. He moves around, got, got a few more wheels, a little bit more speed. I was going to call him Little Pony, but he's 6'3", 217, <laughs> and he's a freshman. That's 10 catches now for James. I don't know. Dad had some wheels, too. Harrell finds Crabtree again. How about that? 
He stops and then just spins quickly, gets close to the first down, holt on the tackle. I mean, there's not many guys in the NFL who can do what he just did. And that's on a bad ankle. I mean, he rolled his ankle last week on a kickoff return, but talking about the, an ideal spread type receiver watch the athletic ability here and the ability to stop start change gears and get going again amazing just kind of a freakish type athlete and that you throw the hands in there usually there's something wrong where there's some type of shortcoming there are none with Michael Crabtree seven catches so 58 now in the season second in the big 12 and receiving yards per game. Now you start to think 134 receptions. Maybe they're just feeding him a bunch of screens and this, that. You start breaking this kid down on film, and you'll find that he's flawless. He can get deep for you. He can catch the underneath stuff and then turn it into a big play. He can do it all. And you know what? They don't use him really in reverses and little things like that. They could get him even more involved in the offense. And he's not soft either. Not afraid oh, no. to play no, no, through injury, as we've seen. He'll bring the contact. Third down and one. Big play for Kansas, and they can't make it. Batch on the carry to the 35. It's another Texas Tech first down. When you start talking about receivers around the country, Regis Ben is another one that comes to mind when you talk about he and Crabtree. I think he's still got a little bit more development to go. But ben, you're talking Regis about. Ben, a little bit more development. Michael Crabtree is ready, like yeah. right now, yesterday ready. And so uh, he had the, the benefit of redshirting his first year, came in and had the phenomenal season last year, as you mentioned. 134 receptions and he seems to be on pace right in par with that uh, this this year. He's a redshirt sophomore so he can leave after this year. Larry Fitzgerald left after his sophomore year as well but he had a year of prep school. But can I have both of them. You know just give me both of them. He and Reed just been on the outside. They're about the same size and how about that another great catch. That was a little bit behind him and he struggled with it for a minute and then pulled it in and he still got five yards. Most most guys would have gotten tackled yeah. right after he caught it. He's got such confidence confidence and his ability to catch the football here. Look at the eyes now right now down the field but he just has a knack for feeling the football and when you have a guy like that I say it all the time you don't have to throw the perfect pass to him. You put it around his body and the hands are so good he's going to take care of you. And you could tell that ankle is bothering him. He heard it on a kick return last week against AM. Harrell on second down. Look at that time that he has to throw. Finds his man inside the 20 yard line. Jacoby Franks, a freshman from Orange, Texas, to the 16 yard line. At some point, defensively, you're going to have to sell out to get to Graham Harrell. And, and if, you, if you continue to play zone, then you're just going to die a slower death, but eventually a death. In the end, it will be the end result. He's a guy seen all the coverages. Now you have to find a way to make him uncomfortable. Looks like Kansas is lining up to come after him right now. Here they come, and Reesing trying to dump it off to Batch, incomplete. So they did get pressure with Jake Laptad, who has five sacks on the season. Let's take a look at Graham Harrell's efficiency today. In this one, 69 percent. Completion percentage that's for the season and 87% down here at the bottom today. That's good stuff. And for those of you that want to see Colt McCoy at 81%, he'll be on ABC at 3:30 as Texas faces Oklahoma State. Texas Tech and Texas will play next week. 11th play of this drive. Harrow with time again, and that pass is caught for another Red Raider first down. Lyle Leong with his eighth grab of the year. Well, he's got great hands and exceptional leaping ability. You know, when he was in high school, he competed uh, in the high jump. Actually, in, at Texas Tech, he's on their track team competing in the high jump. So good, good athlete, Lyle Leong. Crabtree back in the game. First down and goal for Texas Tech. Here's Woods to the goal line. And they're going to say that he did not get the ball across. You know, Oklahoma looked pretty good on offense last week. Texas looked pretty good on offense in its game against Oklahoma. This may be the best offense that I've seen this year. Yeah, and it is uh, hitting on all cylinders. 
And Clint Bowen right now, the defensive coordinator for Kansas, just you know playing dial a defense. You know anybody that'll answer the phone or any defense that'll work, he's <laughs> dialing it right now. Well, they and, had a receiver. And they can't seem to find the answer. They, they had a receiver, Damon Patterson, a true freshman, coming to play corner for a couple plays. In the uh, the first half, you see him there at the top of your screen, number 28. He's out there again at corner. And on the running play by Harrell, it's a touchdown for Texas Tech. Seventh drive of the game, sixth touchdown for the Red Raiders, and that's the sixth rushing touchdown for Harrell on the season. Boy, it's just tough when you get a, an offense that's that efficient. And the only drive that they that stopped them in the first half was one where the clock ran out. Yeah. Otherwise, they were uh, primed to uh, to punch another one in the end zone. And Williams. Uh, so again, what a kicking contest earlier this season. Six for six today. Five touchdowns for Harold. The score was 14-14 late in the first quarter, but 28 straight points by Texas Tech. And we have not heard Rock Chalk Jayhawk at all today. It's been all 42-14 Texas Tech. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. Texas Tech blowing out Kansas 42 14 a beautiful day though in Lawrence is that shot taken from the bell tower here on campus at Kansas beautiful get out Killian some water he went up 200 plus steps to take that <laughs> shot from the top of the bell tower you see the hill there oh yeah which slopes down towards the uh, Memorial Stadium where a lot of the fans hang out for tailgating before and after the game Corona to kick off Herford will let it go into the end zone it will come out to the 20 for Kansas. Graham Harrell and Texas Tech's offense dominant. You talked about it, Andre. The only non-scoring drive was at the end of the half when they only had about 30 seconds to work with. Well, and they're running the football. I mean, now they're finding new ways in which to challenge themselves. And it's can they keep this streak alive that every time they've had the football with enough time on the clock that they're punching it in the end zone. Not kicking field goals, but they're scoring touchdowns. Have you seen a better offense this year? You know, I don't think so. I really don't. Uh, been, been very impressed. Watched them against Texas A&M last week. And was impressed with the way they played in the fourth quarter, but they came, came right out in this game, hitting on all cylinders. Racing has been sacked twice, got away from pressure, and his pass underthrown and intercepted by Darcel McBath. Third INT for McBath and Graham Harrell back at it again. And you really don't see this from a guy like Todd Reesing. Had only thrown five interceptions coming into this football game. But right here, he's going to try to force one. And you'll see him just kind of play action, move the pocket a little bit, a little bit of pressure. But he's used to that. And now you're going to see right here, he's got a nice little throwing window out here. He chooses to go inside. And that's where you pay the price. You go late. And. Darcel McBath makes him pay. Third interception for McBath. And Kansas in big time trouble. If they weren't already, down four scores. Harrell again with time. Look at him survey the defense and find a receiver. Not much there, though, for Eric Morris as we check in with Reese in the studio. All right, Dave, you know, every week we honor the AT&T ESPN All-America Player of the Week. We'd like for you to have your voice heard. Just text VOTE to 51234 on your AT&T wireless phone. You can access the nominees and enter for a chance to win a trip to the national championship game in January. I would say that thus far, Graham Harrell is a pretty good candidate for that award. Yeah, I'd say right now, Reese, although a ton of games left, but uh, this is against a ranked team in the top 20 and 23rd in the BCS standings, and Harrell is lighting it up. He finds Batch there. Texas Tech dominating time of possession. Yeah, because you, you can't find a way to stop them. I mean, they could, they come right out of the locker room and pick up where they left off. 51 plays run in this football game. Usually you get around 60 to 65 plays, and we're not anywhere near the fourth quarter yet. Big third down and eight for Kansas on defense. Harrell again with a ton of time his pass right on the money to swindle for a Texas Tech first down to the 25 tackled by Corrigan Powell 
Couch football and ABC continues with Saturday night football. A couple of offenses playing really well, especially Ohio State after its game against Michigan State. Penn State third, Ohio State ninth in the BCS standings. Saturday night football presented by Southwest Airlines on ABC tonight at 8 Eastern. Terrell Pryor, what a lift he has given Ohio State's offense. Different football team, totally different football team with him under the center. I said that night against USC. They could only move the football when Terrell Pryor was in the game. Woods on the run, picks up another first down and won't go down. Holt had a hold of him, but eventually at the nine-yard line they get him. Well, Penn State's offense has been good all year. We had him against Purdue. That was maybe their worst day, and they still won that game against Purdue on the road, but you got Royster and Clark. Royster's one of the more underrated backs in college football. Yeah, but you see the Kansas defense here on the field for 97 plays last week against Oklahoma. And you, there's, that's a lot of opportunities to get hit in the face. And faced with a first down and goal. Handoff to Batch. Wrapped up at the six yard line. Well, you think of Texas Tech, you think of this finesse football team, that big massive offensive line and guys with splits, asking them to uh, basically go out on an island. Even the guards in the center inside, they're on their own individual island in terms of pass protection, and they hold up very well. Graham Harrell has not been harassed at all in this game. Maybe one snap, but he looks awfully comfortable sitting back there orchestrating. This uh, this Texas Tech offense and they're taking a little bit more time now running the 40 second clock down at least inside of 20 as Harold goes to the end zone the pass was there but it was broken up by Rivera intended for intended swindle. For so third down and goal for Texas Tech Boy, when you got a, a big guy up front like that big Brandon Carter mankind. It was Big 12 honorable mention last year. Hey, he'd just scare you coming to the line of scrimmage. You'd be afraid to try to get around the guy if you're a defensive line. Plus, we've seen him on screen passes, running downfield, yeah. throwing blocks, and diving at guys. That's 6'7", 354 pounds pulling around on a screen pass. Here's Harrell on third down and goal. Pressure coming. Harrell on the move. Flag down. Harrell's pass is caught for a touchdown by Detron Lewis. May come back with a holding penalty here against Texas holding, Tech. Holding number 76 yeah. of the offense. Penalty is 10 yards and replay third down. Big mankind and giving it to uh, to the defense as he's walking back to the huddle. You see him right here in the middle of your screen. And as Graham Harrell moves around, now he just loses his leverage on Jamal Green. Hmm. You disagree with that call? I don't know when you know when when a guy's moving in the quarter I think you have to take into account when the quarterback moves and, and the pockets no longer the same where uh, a guy can put his hands in reference to the defensive lineman that changes as well for an official. What a great play by Harold nonetheless. He'll get another opportunity third down and goal. It's a screen and guess who Crabtree runs into an official. He bounces right off of the official and gets into the end zone. Give Touchdown, Texas, Texas, Tech. Texas Tech. Give me Michael Crabtree. You watch him on film. You leave with your jaw hanging and, and on the floor. You get him in person, and he's better than advertised. We talked about a signature type play for a guy in a Heisman Trophy race. Oh, yeah. I don't know if that qualifies, but it was pretty darn close. Extra point, good. Watch here on the replay. Nice little underneath screen pass. One tackle, two tackles. Get out of my way, official. I got business in the end zone. Michael Crabtree. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by Hummer, like nothing else. Allen Fieldhouse, home of the national champion Kansas Jayhawks, but Bill Self with a tall order replacing some great players, including Mario Chalmers, who hit that memorable shot against mm -hmm. Memphis in the title game. Sharon Collins is back, but we'll see how the Jayhawks do in the Big 12, where football team right now struggling. 
and staring their third loss of the season in the face thanks to Michael Crabtree who's got two touchdown catches today. Nine receptions in all Crawford and Herford and it's Herford taking it for the Jayhawks and he's wrapped up at the 37 yard line by the kicker Donnie Corona. Back to Lawrence in a moment with the Jayhawks down 49 14. Rob Stone back here in Lawrence. What's looking more and more like Texas Tech will go unbeaten as they get set to take on Texas next week. A lot of fun here on the sideline for Texas Tech as Graham Harrell and company having some fun with the Kansas fans behind them. You know, I spoke with head coach Mike Leach as he came off here for the first half. And he asked him, you know, what went wrong that first half? He paused. He said, not much. I think same case here for the second half, guys. But here's a question, Andre. How much longer do you keep Graham Harrell and Crabtree out on the field with this lead? Well, you know, I think maybe another series or so. And, and then I think they give way to Taylor Potts and, and some other younger receivers for the Texas Tech offense because it uh, they, they've certainly been efficient with the first group sharp gets nothing there on first and ten and conversely you see the looks from uh, the Kansas uh, sideline most of those guys uh, defensive players and boy it has been a rough game for them and their defense struggled against Oklahoma but they're able to put up points on the Sooners Better than 30 points and almost 500 yards total offense, but not today. That pass is overthrown and it is intercepted by McBath again. That's his second one of this half. All right, and the thing, the difference in the game defensively, Texas Tech harassing Todd Reesing a little bit more than the Kansas defense getting in the face of Graham Harrell. And now two, two interceptions. You rarely see that from a guy like Todd Reesing. He's got time but he's got push in his face which forces him to have to throw a perfect pass to Desmond Briscoe overshoots him and now Texas Tech and Graham Harrell back on the field. Fans already out of here in Lawrence with 419 to go in the third. And a penalty flag as there was some movement Crabtree is not on the field right now Harrell is still the out there a false start by number 67 of the offense. The penalty is five yards and it's still first down. Let's check in with Rob. Dave, I'm looking at Crabtree right now and he is up off the bench on the sidelines. But when you're by the coach without a helmet on, that's usually an indication you may be done, at least for this drive. And we're talking about Taylor Potts. He's got the mouthpiece, right, Andre? He's chomping at the bit to get in there. He's got <laughs> the mouthpiece, but he can't get the ball or the helmet yet. Maybe next drive. Potts a sophomore from Abilene Texas and, and you like Taylor Potts as Harold goes deep and a man's down there again it's Britton that scored a touchdown on the second play in the first quarter that one almost went the distance to Britton the same exact play that he hit Edward Britton on in his first pass attempt of the game for a touchdown and they go right back to the well again if it was good enough then why not run it again in the third quarter you're going to see him come into your screen just a deep post pattern nice eyes to draw the safety up on the underneath route same result well kind of close big deep pass but not the uh, the touchdown on the end of it Harold to the air again facing pressure gets hit as he throws and it's broken up at the last second. It was intended for Franks at the goal line as we check in with Reese. And Dave, you guys aren't seeing all of the offense. Oklahoma and Kansas State, 28-21. Josh Freeman leading his team, a little underneath pass, and that's pretty as you please to Deion Murphy, who scores for the second time of the day. And as you saw the graphic, Oklahoma 4-4 four four in those opportunities. Sam Bradford and DeMarco Murray. Oklahoma has missed an extra point, and they're running in for another touchdown as I speak. It's now 54-28. Wow. Mm. Wow, uh, the Big 12, it's fun to watch if you like offense, but not if you're a defensive coordinator as James was open, but the pass was too tall. So it'll bring up third down and 10. Well, this is why you, you may want to start thinking about taking Graham Harrell out of the game. Now you're getting guys that want to get shots on the quarterback. Nothing else to lose. You're, you're getting beat on the scoreboard. And now you're taking some shots at, uh, at Graham Harrell. Maybe time for uh, Taylor Potts to get himself in the game. Third down and 10. Only one third down conversion that didn't work today. Harrell stepping up, being chased by Borson, and Harrell dives for the first down marker. 
And we'll see where they spot it. Going to be close at the two. Maybe just short of a first down, but we know the riverboat gambler that Mike Leach is. If he'll go for it on fourth and two inside his 32 yard line, then he'll go for it here on fourth, fourth down. Just saw that score flash across Oklahoma with 55 28. Now, Reese told you that they went in for the touchdown, so they got the point after. And you know, that's confidence in your offense right here. Fourth and an inch, you don't line up to run the football. You try to extra receiver or so out there, and let's throw for it on fourth and an inch. Well, Harold then goes up under the center, takes the snap, falls forward, and has the first down. You were telling me last night, we were talking about your offense at Houston, the run and shoot, and the similarities between the spread that Mike Leach runs it, and mm -hmm. your comment was, same thing except what? And the shotgun. Same same type of uh, route, same routes, same adjustments, uh, four receiver sets. Of course, we didn't, you know, we had some pretty good ones, but we didn't have a Michael Crabtree. That's for sure. Not many people do. First down and goal. Here's Woods, and he'll walk in another Texas Tech touchdown, 55 to 14. Or just making it look easy. Hit Shannon Woods on the board with his ninth touchdown run, touchdown of the season. Well, I have been. I, I don't know all season long, and this is film study included. If I've seen an offense that clicks the way the Texas Tech Red Raiders do. I mean you talk about hitting on all cylinders. They are a machine offensively. And again a perfect extra point by Matt Williams. And it's 56 to 14 Texas Tech. Jimmy Johnson looks to score a second straight victory put some distance between himself and the competition as the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues at Atlanta on ABC Sunday coverage beginning with NASCAR countdown at one Eastern the chase for the Big 12 and national title continuing later with Texas taking on Oklahoma State and you wonder is there a defense that can stop Texas Tech because we're seeing all these points and these great offenses around the Big 12. And for the top eight of the BCS standings initially are Big 12 South teams. But can any defense stop what you've seen today? I don't think so. I, I mean, you're going to have problems with it because as a play caller, and it involves the, the entire football team, not just from a, a defensive standpoint of trying to stop Texas Tech. They're so potent that when you have the football offensively, You've got to call the perfect game. That is a tremendous amount of pressure on, on a play caller that you can't call a bad play and get yourself in third down along, end, end up having to punt the football to a machine like the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Well, you got to find a way to get to Harrell if you're a defense, and you got to force turnovers, and Kansas has done neither today. Crawford on the return for the Jayhawks. And a flag down as Crawford is tackled at the 27. And Kansas was struggling on defense coming into this game, but again, had been able to score enough points to hang with teams like yeah. Oklahoma. Holding number 45 of the receiving team. Penalties half the distance to the goal, and it's first down. Problems continue for Kansas. Here's Reese Davis in the studio. All right, Dave Andre, show you what's going on in the family of networks. Over on ESPN2, Illinois and Wisconsin, it's been a little ugly at times, but it's tight. Near in the fourth quarter, Camp Randall tied at 17. Minnesota and Purdue, Curtis Painter's out of the game. The Golden Gophers trying to win for the seventh time and trying to hang on as the Boilers throwing for the end zone, but coming up a little short. It's 10-6 there, and that's on ESPN Classic. Boy, you see the high scoring games, Reese and Andre yeah. here in the Big 12 and the low scoring contests in the Big 10. Penn State and Ohio State both have good offenses. Do you expect low or high scoring in that game on ABC tonight? I think there may be a few points scored now when two uh, outstanding quarterbacks going at it and Daryl Clark and Terrell Pryor. And, uh, you know, it'll, the, the pressure will be on the defense certainly to stop those two guys, but they're both operating at such a high level. Got to believe that there'll be some points scored in the big horseshoe tonight. Pass was intended for Sharp, incomplete. Second and ten, number eight. That's what that was the example right there. Now you wind up in second down and ten. You have to have everything work out perfectly. Otherwise, you're chasing Texas Tech all game long. Nine first downs for Tech, zero for Kansas here in the half. And another interception. McBath with his third of this quarter. There's a flag down. 
at the 20 yard line. McBath eventually tackled at the eight by Jake Sharp. But Todd Reesing is going McBath. to see Darcel McBath in his sleep. Nightmares because number seven has come up big defensively for Texas Tech. We knew he was a good safety, but man, he is he has shown it today. After the interception, an illegal block in the back by number 10 of the intercepting team. The penalty is 10 yards, and it's a first down. Let's go down to the field and check in with Rob. Well, guys, two things. Number one, Mike Leach did not have that quarterback conversation, so Graham Harrell quickly grabbed his helmet to run back out on the field. But during that last drive, he took a shot, and I've been watching him on the sideline, and the medical staff did come over and were examining kind of the, the top of his left hand and the left wrist as well, more towards that pinky area if you will so something to keep on as Harold is again still out there and I'm telling you what guys the, the rate this is going this is going to look like a scrimmage in the fourth quarter because no one will be in the crowd you're not kidding uh, that it's about a half full right now Harold with five touchdowns 386 he threw for 536 in a game already this year McBath now with five picks on the year and they are running right through Kansas Woods inside the 20 down to the 16 yard line. Yeah you know I, th I think it's about time Mike Leach calls the dogs off right now get Graham Harrell out put some ice on that hand and, and rest him. This may indeed be the last drive but I think enough's enough 56 14 and it's well in hand your defense is playing outstanding. Uh, the good thing about uh, John Jenkins Jack party the year we were putting up a lot of numbers. I didn't see the fourth quarter in a lot yeah. of those games so. Uh, I think you pull the dogs off here at some point. Although they ran it on the last play and they picked up 20 yards. So in a way I guess they, they did call it off on that previous play but Harold going to throw here and he's in trouble and he gets sacked just the second time all year Jamal Green sacking Harold. And I think it was Jamal Green that hit Graham Harold the, the uh, play that Rob Stone described that put a helmet right in the midsection of Graham Harold finally getting to him. And now you know those linemen they have nothing to lose. This may be the relentless effort that you needed early in this football game. Now they're a little bit ticked off that the fact that Graham Harrell's still in the ball game. That's the attitude you needed to start it. Only the second sack given up by Texas Tech. Second down and 18 now for the Red Raiders. Hand off to Woods down to the 20 so third down coming up right now Texas Tech pummeling Kansas by 42 points and Harrell with only eight incompletions and five touchdowns ahead in our telecast we're going to match up the top teams in the SEC against the top teams in the Big 12 and and hypotheticals who would win and then top three teams in the Initial BCS standings all in action. Yeah. Penn State, Ohio State on ESPN tonight, or on ABC tonight, on ESPN tonight. You get Alabama, Tennessee, and on ABC this afternoon, you get Texas and Oklahoma State. Harrell in trouble again, and look at this. He almost gets out of the grasp of James Holt, but he's sacked back at the 27. Well, now you left him out there, and yeah. you've watched him get hit twice on this series and sacked both times. Now I sacked again, and you know what I think? helped my case in winning the Heisman Trophy the year that we had so many numbers was the fact that indeed I didn't play but only t in two games in the fourth quarter of those games if you keep him out there long enough then it appears to voters that you're leaving him on the field to run up numbers to get the attention for the Heisman so I, I think it can do as much harm hmm. or more harm than good in a situation like that. Well the game clearly in hand it's 56 14 as we go to the fourth quarter two sacks in the last minute by Kansas one in the first seven games and two and a half quarters allowed by Texas Tech boy do the Red Raiders look good on their way to eight and oh and perhaps moving up in the BCS standings fourth quarter still to come might wish they live somewhere else right now because their team has run only five plays this half three interceptions they're down by 42 and now Donnie Corona Trying to add three more 43 yard field goal attempt and Corona's missed now five on the season. That's, that's about, about the best thing that's happened to Kansas today. That's about the only negative you know working on the sideline of Texas Tech is that they're going to have you know they, they're going to find themselves in a position where they're going to need field goals at some point in the season and they got to get that baby ironed out. Yeah, that's the only thing right now. You know, before the Oklahoma loss to Texas, we wondered about Oklahoma special teams. Right. Texas Tech special teams, definitely a question mark. It looks like they found 
the kicker for the short situations with that guy Matt Williams who's made all his PATs they had six blocked on the year prior to this game and they may want to give Williams a shot on field goals as well here's a pitch to Sharp dragged down from behind at the 40 but he got the first down back to the studio here's Reese all right, Dave, much tighter game in the ACC. North Carolina, Boston College, Chris Crane and the Eagles down by seven. And I want you to watch the return by Kendrick Burney of North Carolina. They've been among the nation's leaders all year in picks. And this is, this is a pretty good return. They gave duck under guys. Oh, didn't pay it off with a touchdown, but Carolina would poke it in. They're up by 14 going to the fourth. Got to get in the end zone. <laughs> he can't get down to, to the one. And not cash it in. Penalty flag down. As Sharp. Blocked by number 77 of the offense. The penalty's 15 yards and replay first down. So chop block on Kansas. We talked about the fact that uh, basketball season right around the corner for the defending national champion Kansas Jayhawks. Uh, back on March 3rd of last season. Uh, Pat Knights, Texas Tech men's team scored 51 against Kansas. And uh, the football team's given up. Outscoring 56. the basketball, yeah. outscoring the hoops team. We still got a lot of time left. You know, Kansas so still will be at worst tied for first in the north with a loss today. That pass tipped and nearly intercepted for a fourth time this half. Marlon Williams almost picked it off. It was tipped at the line. Yeah, he plays in all their sub packages on defense. And his honorable mention all Big 12 last year. Or actually, all, yeah, all conference honorable mention last year at outside linebacker. Lugerville, Texas. Second and 20. Graham Harrell uh, might be done. There's his backup Taylor Potts warming up for the Red Raiders. Yeah, good to see that. They're starting to uh, get to Graham Harrell a little bit. There's the pitch to Sharp. That's been their best play. And he's wrapped up at the 29 yard line. College football on ABC continues this afternoon with regional action. We told you about Texas, the number one team in the initial BCS standings, taking on Oklahoma State. College football presented by Best Buy on ABC at 3.30 Eastern time. I know you like Oklahoma State's offense. Do they have enough to beat Colt McCoy in the Longhorns? Well, they've certainly uh, looked that way, but I think going into Austin, maybe if that game were in Stillwater and, and at home for Oklahoma State, it's a different environment, but going to Austin, a tough place to play. Got to like the Longhorns in that one. Texas Tech will be playing Texas next week as Reeson gets the first down to the 45. Texas Tech been able to win on the road. They're going to go to 4-0 on the road with the win here. You know, Tulsa's having a great year. They're perfect on the season. Yeah. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, you see a combined 20 and 1 with the only loss to a number one team uh, out right. of Texas. And then well, you look at Washington, and it looks a little bit different. Great Northwest combined 1 and 13 between those two schools. That is uh, not going to get it done. Washington will play Notre Dame tonight on ESPN2. And Washington State's uh, only win against Portland State. Washington without a win. McKenna Dixon shaken up for Texas Tech. Here's a stat for you. Texas Tech offensively in the third quarter ran 30 plays. Mm. 30 plays in the third quarter. And you might. That's tough. You might get, what, 75 in a college game? Oh, uh, yeah. You're thinking 65, 70 plays in a game. That's, that's a lot of plays run in just one quarter. Michael Crabtree there, terrific in this game. And Brandon Carter with the. Uh... <laughs> I tell you what, if football doesn't work out for Brandon Carter and he doesn't go to the next level, I got a career for him. He wants to be a wrestler. A wrestler. If he play football, yeah. <laughs> I think he would fit right in. Fourth down and five, Kansas has to go for it. They have not crossed midfield since late in the first quarter. Everybody covered. Racing tries to force it in there to Meyer because he had to, and it's incomplete. And so Texas Tech will take over. There's something about Racing today that just doesn't seem, you know, doesn't seem right. 
You watch him against Oklahoma last week. Seemed to be comfortable. Today, a little bit different story. Texas Tech, 56, Kansas, 14. This telecast is available in high definition. Brought to you by Pioneer's new Kuro. Texas Tech blowing out Kansas. Well, last week, Rob Stone was in a tent in State College. Rob, where are you today? I'm on uh, what they've cleverly termed the hill. I'm kind of like going downhill, but I'm going against the stream of traffic as everybody's busting out of here for the homecoming game. So homecoming is continuing. We're going to, hey, how you doing? When, when did you cut bait on this football game? Um, we left at halftime. Oh, way to, way to hang in there and fight for your yeah. team. Hey, uh, any, any idea when basketball season starts? Basketball season can't start fast enough. Uh, <laughs> you're getting the temperature of the crowd here, Dave, huh? Yeah, and, and it's getting a little nasty here on the field. I think <laughs> the football players are uh, on the same line of thinking as the fans right now. They want to get this thing over with. Yeah, where are you guys going? What's the rush? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're going to the basketball complex. Smart people here. Rob, do you need some water or something? You sound a little winded walking down that hill. <laughs> no, no, Remember, I, I'm they're going up the hill. You're yeah. going down it. Well, I already went up to go down. Oh, okay. You know, the problem is I'm walking by all these coolers and I'm having these college flashbacks and must <laughs> focus on the job. Killing me. That's good stuff. Although I, I, I did enjoy the time that Rob spent in the tent surprising the Penn State fans the night before the game as they were hanging out awaiting the Michigan Wolverines as that pass batted down. Incomplete Brorson making the play for Kansas. Let's check in with Reese Davis. All right, guys, Indiana threatening to put a damper on Northwestern's great start. It's 14 12. A little trick ration as Mitchell Evans comes out and finds Tandon Doss for the score. And Bill Lynch's team had a 21 12 lead, but Northwestern's gotten back in. It's 21 19. And right now, Northwestern and Minnesota look like two of the better teams in the Big Ten. A lot of people thought they'd be near the bottom yeah. this year, but you know, Wisconsin struggling. Illinois having some issues this year as well as Lewis makes the catch. The ball came out, but they say Lewis is down at the 15th. Checking again with Rob. Yeah, some people I think are actually heading back to the stadium. Where are you guys? Hold on, slow down here. Where, where are we going? Oh. No, no, no. Hang with me. That's broken glass. Where are we going? <laughs> Up to drink some beers. Uh-oh. Uh <laughs> Are we allowed to talk about that, guys? Absolutely. Are we going back to the football game, or is it? Are we strictly tailgating mode now? Fresh right now. I got to be honest with you. So we need to regroup economically, or just football-wise. Football-wise. Okay. Yeah, economics are not on our mind right now. I mean, that's after today. But right now, the forefront of our mind is this ugliness in front of us. This is horrific. Yeah, you got to watch out because we're about to get uh, who concert over here by the bum rush of fans coming our way, All right, we'll guys. Take it. No, we're okay. You got to You got to remember too. This is homecoming, and you got a lot of uh, yeah. Kansas alumni around the country that are coming back. A lot of people coming game. back. I know on uh, my flight in, there were a lot of Kansas alums on the plane uh, coming into uh, to Lawrence to see and take part in uh, in the homecoming festivities. You now Roger Twybell uh, is here as well, a uh, great broadcaster and lives in Kansas City. He's an alum of uh, terrific a journalism school here at yeah. Kansas. Gary Bender went there as well. Second down and five for Texas Tech. Here's Potts to the end zone. Another touchdown for the Red Raiders. And it's Craig's son, Adam James, with the score 62 to 14, Texas Tech. Well, Adam James getting involved in, uh, in the scoring here. And you see all the, there may be more on that hill than there are in the stadium at this point. I'll tell you what, no Texas Tech fans, they hadn't left. And how about Taylor Potts? Comes in, throws a few passes, gets his first touchdown this season. He had thrown just 25 passes coming into today and no scores. And the first touchdown of the career of Adam James. Matt Williams, PAT, makes it 63 14. And you can pretty much gather what the headlines are going to be at the University Daily Kansan, the student newspaper here in Kansas, after this one. ESPN's College Football is presented by Cars.com, where confidence comes standard. And in part by Kingsburg. For a chance to win the ultimate bowl game and tailgate experience, go to ESPN.com, keyword search Kingsburg. Kansas won 12 games last year, played at a BCS Bowl for the first time, and beat Virginia Tech 
in the Orange Bowl than the basketball team cutting down the nets. Their first NCAA title since 1988. And conversely, in 2008, day. yep, giving up 63 points. And you have that basketball season starting soon. Now Kansas still tied for first, even with a loss today in the North. And uh, of course, if you win the North, you get a chance to still win the Big 12 and play in a BCS Bowl. But Kansas got to get a lot of things figured out on defense. One of the more dominant teams, you know, living in the South of, uh, of the Big 12, the south, southern part of the conference in Oklahoma or Texas, then Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. You got Texas Tech still undefeated after today. Boy, it's uh, shaping up pretty to be a fantastic finish. Reesing finds Briscoe has been relatively quiet since the first half. Out of bounds at the 25 and back to Reese Davis. All right, guys, wanted to show you the last touchdown that Oklahoma scored right before the end of the first half. Ryan Royals catching it on his own 32, and he'll run 68 yards basically unencumbered. I do not believe he was touched either by a man in purple or one of his teammates. Plenty of gas to get into the end zone, and OU rolls double nickels in the first half. 55-28, second half about to start. Baylor just doinked a field goal off the upright, but they're up three at Lincoln. Meanwhile, Reese Crawford with a big run out to the 46-yard line. A lot of points being scored today in conference games. Florida put up 49 on Kentucky. That game not over. And Tim Tebow, by the way, still in that game yeah. in the fourth quarter where Graham Harrell's been pulled here. Remember a couple of weeks ago when Kansas State uh, lost and, and the team scored 38 points on them. Ron Prince took them right back to uh, Manhattan, Kansas, and ran 38 sprints. You think they got 55 Ooh. on the plate for tonight? And for a while they were in that game. It was 28 21 at one point. Yeah. Racing on first down. Slings it for Meyer. Caught at the 49 in Texas Tech territory. Well, I didn't call his name a bunch today. Had a couple of nice grabs early in the game. Kerry Meyer. Uh, Desmond Briscoe needed to get him going, but. It's just when you when you plan so well defensively like Texas Tech has been and then unable to stop them on offense and that makes for a long day for anyone to get themselves involved in the game. And here's the other thing Andre Kansas had won 13 straight home games. You know so they've gone through uh, a couple of Big 12 home campaigns winning every game as yeah. Meyer drops that one and you come in and, and, and you score 63 and again with Texas Tech playing Texas next week and then Oklahoma State followed by Oklahoma we'll know in a few more weeks whether Texas Tech is the best team in the country but certainly they're making a case offensively that they're up there with anybody in terms of what they can do it and Ruffin McNeil right there his defense has been great today yeah you look at it Todd Reesing's not a guy that's used to losing he's lost two games this season only one a year ago and then maybe this one once uh, this one shakes out so four games in two years he'll uh, he'll bounce back for Kansas. Three interceptions this half had two last week. Here he is running and leveled at the 42 yard line by LaRon Moore. And that 13 game home winning streak was the fourth longest in the country. When you look at the Big 12 North and Kansas as well as Missouri both teams their losses have come from against teams in the south so you're wondering just how entertaining the Big 12 championship game will be why you think in one of the two whether it's Missouri or Kansas will wind up there facing one of these potent teams from the south whether it's Texas whether it's uh, Texas Tech Oklahoma State they've already had their number. 63 to 14 by the way Florida scored again they got 56 Tebow still in the game though in the third quarter and, and you wonder here Graham Harrell pulled what about Todd Reesing if you're Mark Mangino how much longer you leave him in. Yeah you don't want to subject him to, to injuries Kerry Meyer is uh, the backup and I, th I think uh, at some point here maybe this may be Reesing's last drive and Reesing just got drilled Spe there especially after that last look he pitched it to Crawford but Reesing is still down now he hops to his Number feet three. back at the 48. Yeah Brandon Williams uh, just kind of kissed him with his face mask and you'll see here running the option the defensive end elects to take the quarterback and uh, that's one right there if you're uh, Mark Mangino I think you give Todd Reesing the rest of the day off. Reesing at about 200 pounds maybe that's generous five feet eleven. Well, not the biggest guy but 
He always seems to bounce back from big hits. He's done that over the course of his career. Tough kid. On third down and one, Angus first down. Boy, he's a different type of runner from uh, Jake Sharp. Big physical guy, 6'2", 222, steady player. He's from an athletic family. Both his sisters played volleyball in college, so he's a guy that uh, that they may need to rely on here going down the stretch. Give him a physical, more of a physical presence, uh, being able to run the football. Racing finds Briscoe, and he's pushed out by Bird. It doesn't seem that offense is the issue, although Reesing struggled today in the second half. But again, they're down big. He's trying to do all he can to bring them back. But clearly, defense well, is the issue for Kansas. What you're looking at now at Texas Tech, they've got their ears pinned back. Guys like Brandon Williams and, and the guys coming off the edge, they're, they're in the game solely to pass rush and get to Todd Reesing. So I think that's where uh, where you, you go ahead and give him the rest of the afternoon, sit him down. Well, Ruffin McNeil still pretty fired up, wants his defense to play better, even though they've only given up 14, 63, 14 the score. And it's been for quarterbacks, not just at this level, but how about Kerry Collins and the job he's done yeah. in the NFL? Some of the uh, elder statesmen like uh, Kurt Warner, Kerry Collins, uh, the plus 30 quarterbacks in the NFL getting it done. Meanwhile, Peyton Manning and the Colts struggling, and that's a big game for them. Here's Quigley on the run, and he appears to be short of the first down tackled by Brian Duncan. Wait. Talking about uh, undefeated teams with the Tennessee Titans. How about the undefeated teams left in college football? Texas sits atop the BCS standings there followed by Alabama Penn State Oklahoma and Texas. One of them at some point is going to have a uh, at some point tonight will have a blemish on the record Utah tucked in there at number 11 and of course if Oklahoma State were to knock off Texas then you start talking about well who's the number one team in the country Alabama plays tonight against Tennessee on ESPN Penn State's going to have their hands full with Ohio State that's on ABC Crawford picks up the first down remember when Texas beat Oklahoma it jumped all the way from fifth to number one you know if Oklahoma State wins that game people are going to Maybe wonder should they be number one because there's precedence for that kind of a jump. I think, it's, I think it's a legitimate argument when you look at the body of work for uh, the Cowboys out of Stillwater because they the way they beat Missouri uh, early in the year. I think you, you're comparing apples and oranges, but uh, it's kind of similar in a way. Well, a ranked team already knocked off today. Northwestern losing to Indiana. Here's Crawford looking for a hole. He gets to the 10 yard line tackled by Chris Perry. I thought we'd see more of this in terms of uh, Kansas running the football against Texas Tech trying to out physical them at the line of scrimmage. But uh, they chose to go a different route didn't run it. They ran it a little bit but uh, I think they needed a higher dosage and certainly more success in the running game than they had early on. Another handoff Crawford on second and eight powers close to the first down marker at the four. Well it's been quiet in the touchdown club for Kansas and maybe that's why Rob's got such a good seat. I'm, I'm getting a little sleepy sitting back over here. 84 of these luxury seats here in the stadium club. This is the first year and they have uh, it's littered with these plasma screens and this guy over here he's 2500 bucks for a season right to sit here. He's got a great view of this drive for Kansas but he's watching. <clears throat> He's watching his Oklahoma team on the screen over here beat up on Kansas State. And let's see what's oh, look I'm on television right there. That's pretty cool. And let's watch this drive. And we can talk some more. All right. Racing uh, going to hand it off to Crawford. And uh, he's not going to get it in the end zone, but it'll bring up second down a goal. Go ahead, Rob. All right. So what do we get? Oh, you, you guys changed channels. See, they got the where's the remote? See, I'm just happy you guys aren't watching like a Sally Struthers Lifetime movie. We're actually double fisting on uh, Kansas and uh, Texas Tech over here. Who's that good looking guy sitting right next to you in that chair? Man, is that your husband, boyfriend? Boyfriend, yeah. <laughs> oh, so there's a chance is what you're telling me. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Why don't you ask him if they're going to be watching you on bowling uh, tomorrow? That's a great question. Hey, are you guys bowling fans? 
<laughs> Bowling? Yeah, unfortunately, that was the answer. Uh, yeah, the PBA World Championship in Wichita tomorrow. Live coverage on ESPN at 1 p.m. Eastern. Unfortunately, I don't believe they have these luxury seats here. And this recliner kicks back, too, right? Oh, that's living. <laughs> Seriously. Where is the, uh, the food or beer boy? Or, I'm sorry, beverage person. You don't even need the suntan lotion, though. Good stuff. Though, He's comfortable down there. Meanwhile, third and goal, 16th play. The drive coming for Kansas, under four minutes to go now. Crawford trying to stretch across. Touchdown. He'll be happy in the touchdown club after that one. Well, Crawford just needed uh, a little bit of that a lot earlier. First point since a minute remaining in the first quarter. Yes, this game was tied at 14 at one point. Extra point good by Brandstetter, and it's 63 to 21. Texas Tech. Under four minutes to play, still the Red Raiders well on their way to an 8 0 record. There's Rob Stone's next stop, hay bailing after the game on his way to Wichita for bowling tomorrow. Back here in Lawrence, Kansas, and boy, uh, this part of the country just beautiful this time of year. It's a great day, temperature around 60 degrees. It was uh, in the 30s this morning. It was a packed house when we got here for homecoming, but uh, it emptied quickly as Texas Tech leads 63 to 21 with under four to play. Brandstetter to kick off. Ron Moore and Jamar Wall back for the Red Raiders. Wall across the 30. Bounces off a tackler. Out to near midfield before he's wrapped up and brought down. A lot of people wondering which conference is the best, the SEC or the Big 12? Well, let's break it down. Alabama against Texas, who wins? They're going Texas. Texas there, and uh, they've been able to take care of business. Two of the best out of both conferences, I'm going Texas there. How about Florida putting up 56 today against Oklahoma? Going Florida in this one. OU uh, kind of looked vulnerable against Texas a couple of weeks ago, like the, uh, like the Gators in that one. Now, you picked Oklahoma at the beginning of the year to win the national title. What, what's gone wrong there, in your opinion? Well, you know, there, there are things that you can't factor in when uh, the you get into the season. The dynamics change. It's only uh, if things happen and go perfectly to start the season. And it's only, again, one right loss. They can, still, they can right. still win the national title, Oklahoma. Yep. Let's take a look at uh, we, we take the third best uh, uh, right now in each league, Georgia, Oklahoma State. Like Oklahoma State, like the way Zach Robinson's playing, their ability to both run the football as well as throw it, throw it, and they're playing some pretty good defense as well. LSU, Texas Tech, you picked LSU. Does that change after what you saw today? Uh, it makes you waver a little bit, but I think the uh, the Tigers have enough on defense to uh, to harass Graham Harrell and uh, and get their point across. I still I'm unsure about that Oklahoma-Florida one. I think I'd have to disagree with you there. I, I still think Oklahoma's pretty good, even though uh, they have a loss, but that was against Texas, which is now number one. What about Vanderbilt, Missouri? A blowout, Missouri. Got to go with the Missouri Tigers. Chase Daniel, they've lost a couple of games this season, but uh, they'll bounce back. And if this were the matchup, I got to favor Missouri in that one. All right, Kansas, South Carolina, you pick Kansas. Does that change after what you've seen no, today? No, it doesn't. You know, it's just one of those things where matchups make games, and, and I think Kansas matches up a little bit better with a team like South Carolina. They are not as potent as this Texas Tech offense. I agree with all of your picks there except the Oklahoma one. I, I would pick Oklahoma over Florida. That pass broken up by Thornton. Let's go to Reese Davis in the studio. Late in the Indiana Northwestern game, Mike Kafka in at quarterback for Northwestern and Kafka uh, authoring a disastrous novel at the end of the game. That, that's a backward pass. They marked it out of bounds, third and 25, and Indiana wins for the third time this year, 21-19. Well, Northwestern still having a good season. A lot of people think they could still win nine games on the year. They've got to go to Minnesota now, and Minnesota 7-1 yeah. and one after beating Purdue. First punt of the day for Texas Tech, and it comes with 2.20 left in the game, and the punt is muffed, and it's recovered by the Red Raiders. Well, just kind of adding insult to injury. Charbonnet scoops it up for Texas Tech 
on the muffed punt by Damon Patterson, a freshman. Well, you see Damon Patterson here. You got to secure the catch. You miss it. You got a defender right there. Maybe you should have thought about, maybe think about fair catch in that baby. Now Texas Tech set up right around the 10 yard line for more points. Well, they you don't need any more points. You got a player named Corona and Charbonnet for Texas Tech. I'll let you figure out the rest as uh, Texas Tech leading 63 21 with 2 16 remaining and the Red Raider offense back on the field Taylor Potts in a quarterback already a touchdown pass We're trying to get him some experience and he may be the guy next year for Mike Leach Potts pass is caught at the six yard line by Adam James who caught a touchdown I guess in this earlier theory, this quarter. Looks to be fitting in perfectly in this uh, Mike Leach system. Correction, that was not James. That was a uh, guy that's not on the roster, believe it or not. 88, who's not on the well, travel you're roster. Up, you're up by 63, my friend. You're going to get anybody who traveled in the football <laughs> game right now for Texas Tech. Uh, and a fumble at the eight-yard line. And it's re recovered. By Texas Tech. All right, tonight on ESPN and ESPN2. No, nope, it's Kansas ball now, they say. Two college games. First on ESPN at 745. It's Alabama and Tennessee. And at 8 Eastern on ESPN2, Notre Dame and Washington. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. You know, if Notre Dame keeps winning, people are, because they're Notre Dame, are going to make a case for them in a BCS Bowl. You know, we've been talking about the non-BCS conference schools like Boise State. Do they still have a chance? Does Utah still have a chance to get in? Notre Dame could play a role in whether one of those teams gets in before it's said and done, right? Yeah, you know what? I don't like it, but uh, I'm not on the uh, committee that <laughs> decides those types of things. Uh, I, don't, I don't see how you're able to keep uh, both teams, Boise State and Utah, out of a BCS game if they're both undefeated and inside of uh, the top 12 teams in the country Boise State sitting right on the uh, on the fence line when you start talking about that it getting in and that type of conversation Tulsa down there at uh, at 19 you got a ways shot to go. do you now they got a ways to go but uh, we never know how the ball's going to bounce yeah. with the teams in front of them but certainly if Boise State and Utah that's going to be an interesting argument if they both go undefeated and slide up a notch where uh, Boise State's at a little bit higher at uh, at 11 or so and Utah's well into the top 10. Tyler Lawrence is on the two deep and he is oh, he's not even on the two deep he's on the roster though and he's the quarterback right now for Kansas running play and Quigley. Let's go in depth on Michael Crabtree and the type of day he had today. Well he's the type of receiver that is absolutely perfect for what Mike Leach likes to do. You see the hands there catching it in space physical type receiver a tough guy that you need able to change direction and get himself going. Oh yeah did I mention that he could block as well even when they don't go to him he can find ways to get himself open. And then the last one what I like a little underneath screen being able to catch the football make plays after the catch and still score touchdowns where well, he is a sensational wide receiver best receiver I've seen in college since Fitzgerald at Pittsburgh I don't know if you've seen anybody better in the I last agree five I agree years. with you he is uh, he is just something else he, there's not a word for a guy like Michael Crabtree he's, he's in a league of his own. Hey. You started talking about quarterbacks. And the Heisman Trophy in the in this decade, he put on a Heisman type performance that's going to get the attention of a lot of voters today. Graham Harrell outstanding through for 386 and five touchdowns, two of those to Michael Crabtree, both legitimate Heisman Trophy candidates. Only one non-quarterback has won it this decade, and that's Reggie Bush. Meanwhile, Rob Stone with Mike Leach. Well, Coach, last week you won and you dropped in the BCS standings. What kind of message did this victory send? I don't know anything about those dumb BCS standings. I, we just go out and try to play good, and we played played good today, and I was uh, excited for our kids. You know, uh, second early game on the road two weeks in a row and uh, <clears throat> come battling back and play like they did and the rest. I was, uh, I was real proud of our guys. So all we can do is worry about that. All that other stuff, they just have to handle it. Number one Texas comes your way next weekend. What kind of message do you have for the folks who make those college game day decisions? Well, we just have to play good. I mean, I, I don't worry about any of that. We're, we're going we're gonna to try to have the best week of preparation we can and see where it takes. 
Texas. Coach, appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us live. All right, thanks a lot. So Mike Leach in classic fashion, college football scoreboard presented by Acura. Up next, I'm sure Reese, Mark, and Lou will be in classic fashion for Andre Ware. I'm Dave Pash, Texas Tech, terrific today, 63-21 over Kansas. Out of Reese, Mark, and Lou in the studio. This telecast is available in high definition. Brought to you by Pioneer's new Kuro. This is College Football Scoreboard, presented by Acura. Seven minutes, approximately, away from <laughs> horse racing and the Breeders' Cup. Horses can run very fast in seven minutes. Texas Tech can score a lot of points in that period of time, too. Gentlemen, Reese Davis along with Lou Holtz and Mark May. You just watched Texas Tech put an absolute thumping on Kansas on the Jayhawks' homecoming, which I guess turned into a going home when, when, everybody, <laughs> uh, going when home. everybody emptied the stadium, right? Absolutely. i got to tell you, I was more impressed with Texas Tech and Coach Leach was with his own football team. I thought they looked great. I thought they played awesome. I think it's exciting to go to have Texas next week. You know, it, it's extremely going in the upswing. If you've got a punter that only punts one time, Jonathan LaCour, in the football game, and he did it with two minutes and 38 seconds left on the clock in the fourth quarter. So you know your offense is executing very well. Uh, if I was him, I'd worry about earning a letter. <laughs> the punter <laughs> may not be able to earn a letter. Well, I'd worry about the lineman letting him take a shower after the game. Leach is, uh, Leach is not able to show that type of emotion because it wouldn't be befitting of a pirate to do so. Arr, matey. <laughs>